man, Bernie, 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 Bern
for y'all who vacation with us or hang out with us um, during this time of the year when we don't, go to the beach. Don't expect to go to the beach and be there for an hour or two. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't expect. Like we when we, we there. Pull up about eleven. Eleven o'clock. Leave that bitch about five. Five eight, <laughs> and that's early at five. If we, if we leave about five, it might be six six thirty pushing it. It depends on and the how the only clouds move. We leave then is because the kids be whining. I want to go to the pool. Yeah, most pools close at dusk. So anyway, we get there, right? It was decent for about what an hour and a half. About and, a good hour. Yeah, I look up, see them dark ass storm clouds. All of a sudden, I look like I'm a um, what you call it, a local and shit. I'm like, hey, tell my people. I'm like, yeah, about the rain. About the rain. That's a storm cloud there. Usually, what we do is we we wait these motherfuckers out. See that one right there? Yeah, that one got a storm sail in it, right? Whole time I'm looking at the uh, the Apple weather and shit. They say, hey, rain expected in your area. And this before I, you know, I put up all the notifications and shit because I'm still here, right? So then the storm come, you know, the rain come or whatever. And all of a sudden, I look at the the ocean. And I got a newfound respect for the ocean now because I remember when I had shorter hair, you know, I was like, hey, well, I got waves in my head. And, you know, them waves, them bitches be licking, all right? I looked at the ocean. The ocean like a black nigga was in that bitch because the waves were just like a nigga head, right? All of a sudden, you know the rain come. Is? Huh? Jesus Black, he was peeping through the ocean. That was his name. Might be, but... <laughs> no, I think Jesus might be black, though, for real, because he was in the ocean. And I say that he was in the ocean in more than one way. He was in the ocean with them waves, and then the rain came, right? And then my wife, even though I fuck with her, I, I always you know, try to call her white, but she did channel her inner whiteness. Even though she's not white, she's French and Italian. Um, and some more shit And some more shit Like look at her tongue She got spots on it Like the mud dog I'm just fucking with y'all But uh, no, <laughs> uh, But So I look up Me and my homeboy We chilling right The rain coming I'm holding the tent Mind you All the white folk That left this motherfucker We out here Niggas Just out here And then the rain come I'm holding the tent so, Man the storm gonna pass man the storm, it, it found, when it subsided, my homeboy's wife, she darted off to the Jeep. She's in the Jeep. I thought she was going to come back and help me put some of this shit away that I dragged to the beach. She was in the Jeep just chilling, probably scrolling through her uh, timeline or whatever. And my wife and my daughter, they were running down the beach. <laughs> and the, I mean, in the fucking rain was, I mean, it was like Forrest Gump said, like big old fat rain, rain from sideways. It rain, was all three uh, of us. Even rain that come upside down hit you. They was in that shit. The whole time I'm sitting here like, yo. I want them niggas to go to the beach and be like, yo, if I'm cold, if it's colder than the ambient temperature, I ain't fucking with the beach, right? So I'm sitting there looking at these motherfuckers like, I hope they ready to go. We, we, we're here for a while. You know, we can at least, you know, lose a day. So I hurry up once the rain subsides. Me and my homeboy, we throw half the shit in the truck and I get back. I'm throwing mean, shit full of sand. I'm throwing all that shit in the truck, just throwing it, right? And uh, as I'm putting the shit back in, we all kind of, you know, finally everybody get, I guess, the sense of mind, like, hey, this nigga ready to go. My wife, Nicole, and the boys called my daughter. Hey, Zendaya, come check this out. No, so, I was like, get my phone. Yeah, get her phone or whatever. So so I look up. So I look up. And uh, I'm like, what the fuck they talking about? So I run back to this little section of the, uh, I guess you can call dock, it a pier. pier, dock, whatever it is, a beach access, for a better word. And in the distance, it's a motherfucking tornado in the goddamn ocean, y'all. Just like maybe a mile and a half away from us, y'all. It was more than a mile. Shit, if I can see it, but I feel like my my vision probably about a mile, mile and a half. It depends upon how 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 it is, how it is. And um, so I look, I look, I look. It's just a goddamn tornado. She's sitting with the phone, and so what I mainly do, is I get into character. Once I find out we, I'm a safe distance from the. Uh, from the tornado, I all of a sudden try to try to be a meteorologist and shit, and of course I, it it all got fucked up. But hold on, let essence, me interrupt real quick. Go ahead. And FYI, get the camera on me. The homeboy that was with us was hype as shit and was recording the tornado right with me, and he is black. That is true. Yeah, so that is true. He did. So black people do shit like this too. They did, and I don't know if it was just because. Everybody was running off of the uh, the hype of the movie Twisters that just came out, but uh, 
it was kind of it was definitely kind of that daggone weird to to see that tornado in the ocean. Once I saw that motherfucker, I was ready to go. Mind you, I had pregame before we got there, so I was two sheets in the wind, a couple of t-shirts, drawers, all that shit on the clothesline in the wind. I was fucked up. When I saw that goddamn tornado, y'all, I sobered the fuck up to the point where. As I was walking back, it was this group of family who had this house actually on the beachfront, and they were standing on their little uh, pier of beach access. I looked at them motherfuckers. It was like they were eight deep. I said, did y'all just see that motherfucking tornado? And they said, yeah. I said, okay. So I know I ain't fucked up. And they were like, no, yeah. Why the hell are y'all still out here? So I ended up sobering up, but it was awesome to see the tornado. It was awesome to see the tornado like a once in a at the beach. It's a lifetime experience because like, for real, like, to see a tornado, like, that shit's fucking rare. Right. Like, especially around here. Like, right. I guess you go to Texas and shit, shit, wherever Tornado Valley is or whatever, you probably see them all the time and shit, but that was, like, amazing to be able to see and experience to me. Yeah, it was, but it had been It, it very... was only missing one thing. What? My little sister, because she would have been hyper than I was. Oh, you was hitting her up. Angie, Angie, check this shit out. You need to carry your ass back to school to be a meteorologist. That is true. Yeah, cause you, I think you would have had fun of that, but I was like, yo, I don't want no parts of this tornado or water spout, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It was cool to see as well. But with that being said, as y'all guys can see in here, um, for those of y'all who are listening and for those of y'all watching on YouTube, that we are alive and well. We did make our trip back from the Outer Banks, North Carolina. That's where we go. Um, they treat us like locals. Ask the people that came with us. We were talking to people that lived there and worked there, and them motherfuckers knew us by face and name. So shout out to us. It's all about the motherfucking relationship for y'all who don't know. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's get this podcast started. So as we get in this podcast started, y'all, if y'all can look at, I guess, Fit Check or Drip Check, myself and Nicole on the boards, um, we'd like to shout out uh, Team USA. Uh, the Olympics just uh, finished the week as we were coming back from the beach, and um, Team USA, they, they, I guess they, they pulled out all the stops. They um, they served their purpose, which was a great distraction. Um, for those of y'all who you know live in this world, it was good to see all these professional athletes actually come out and compete and during the Olympic ceremony and represent Team USA. And not to stay on it too long, I just wanted to let y'all know that the United States of America had the most medals. Um, they were all, um, although they were tied with China with the most gold medals at forty, um, they they both had. Uh, um, we had one hundred twenty six total gold um, medals in total. Um, we had forty four uh, silver medals, so we had the highest silver medal tally. And um, at bronze, we had 42. So we had the highest all across the board. So shout out to the men and women of the United States, all the athletes and participants who are, who are selflessly represented their country. And it was good to be, you know, I, I feel like all the niggas I knew, A, Z, S, O, Z, um, they were proud to be Americans because I was throwing shots at a whole bunch of my homeboys that were like, Every time I looked on Twitter when when uh, the men's basketball was on, motherfuckers had American flags and shit. I'm like, oh, damn, USA, USA. Damn, y'all motherfucker looking really patriotic over that bitch, right? And to segue, um, shout out to Flavor Flav, uh, first and foremost, <laughs> for his contributions. There's a lot of our celebrities that were center stage during the Olympics, Snoop Dogg being one of them, I think. I saw on the internet he got paid like five hundred thousand dollars every fucking time he was on any segment of the Olympics. Um, he had he also helped walk the torch. I think I spoke with him in the last pie we had before we went on vacation. And um, so. Flavor Flav he also represented the um, the women of the water polo team that actually had to have two and three full time jobs and still train on water polo. He ended up you know help funding that their whole team effort and things of that nature. And to keep it on Flavor Flav, uh, the young lady, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she was a gymnast that got the bronze medal. They stripped her of her bronze medal, and um, he ended up giving her a bronze fucking clock. So shout out to, to Flavor Flav, a custom bronze clock. The shit was dope as hell. He was like, hey, you got one-on-one. 
you know, so regardless of what the National Olympic Committee got to say or whatever, you still, you know, it's a bronze medalist in our heart. And, we you know, he just, you know, wanted to kind of, you know, show everybody, you know, love and support. But uh, you know what I came here for, for the Olympics, which was Simone Biles. Before we left this motherfucker, we all sat in the living room and watched Simone Biles, I think, one of her first uh, events. And we were like, damn, this shit dope. So it was cool to see her live um, <clears throat> during the Olympics as well. We hit the road and then found out she got the gold. Yeah, during the trip, yeah. Um, the, uh, Speaking of the trip, no. Oh, oh no, I told you, so I wanted to just keep on the Olympics real quick. But yeah, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but with that being said, uh, USA Basketball, between uh, for me, between USA Basketball, in between uh, gymnastics, those are two things I, I like watching in the Olympics. Y'all can judge me all the fuck y'all want, but I can care less because I ain't going to hear none of it. And I'm still not losing to sleep tonight. But, yeah, uh, USA basketball was my thing. The championship games uh, was ironic because the men's and the women's basketball teams played against France for the championship. The, I missed the women's game, but I found out that they had won by one point. And for the men's game... Um, I don't think y'all remember because it has been wiped away from the internet, interwebs, anybody who noticed. But I saw it live. But LeBron James got fucking dunked on, yo. And when I mean he got dunked on, he got dunked on. Like, he got dunked on. He got posterized. But you cannot find the video. Just recently this week, I ended up seeing somebody recreate that shit on NBA 2K. And, uh, of course, you know, I, I saved it to my files and shared it and all kinds of shit like that. But, yeah, shout out to the gentleman that uh, dunked on LeBron James. Um, as a matter of fact, I think he got a roster spot now in the NBA. So it all worked out in his favor. Um, but moving right along, uh, to continue with the uh, the NBA, uh, not the NBA, but I guess you can say the NBA players that was in the uh, championship game, USA Basketball, um, Anthony Edwards was one of the stars of the show. He said him, uh, Kevin Durant, and Steph Curry had to take a drug test, uh, I guess, after celebrating the NBA, I mean, it's the NBA final, after celebrating the Olympic final. So that means some boys were torturing them boys. And I ain't never seen a nigga put a team on his back full of a team of all stars and still win. But Steph Curry, I want to give Steph Curry his flowers. I don't know what he do. But the, the dude is a pure, pure damn shooter, yo. And, I mean, it's one shot. He shot over, uh, what's the young boy, Wimbayama, and like some goddamn, it like some Space Jam 3 type shit. Wimbayama at least five feet off top of the ground and arm um, stretched over top of him, seven feet or 12 feet wingspan. And you can see the ball out of Curry hand right over top of him. So that was those for me. Um, but I, I say all that to say this for the fit check. Shout out to my boy Young Wilk. This 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 two pods in a row. I didn't mention this dude, but uh, my young my, my boy Wilk. I don't know how it happened. I was two sheets in the wind, chilling on uh, on vacation, you know, right on the deck or whatever, you know, getting some some rays, watching everybody at the poolside and stuff. And uh, Nicole on the board was like, "Hey, uh, Steve calling." So I'm like, "What the fuck he calling for?" So I ended up. So you know, I accidentally. Yeah, accidentally butt dialed him. Yeah. On like on a regular phone call, I didn't think we could talk to niggas in Australia on the iPhone, but maybe we can. Maybe yeah, you know. Facetime. Facetime, yeah. So he ended up uh, touching base for him, right? Mind you, he he's he's now a, a, a Australian citizen, right? And uh, I think it was towards the end of the night where we were, and it was the early morning where he was, and um, he had just was getting his kids, um, I guess, back to school or something like that, or whatever it was. I, th- I think it may be, yeah, back to school. Dropping him off for uh, for school, and uh, I looked at him. I was like, "Hold up, bro! You got a goddamn USA goddamn uh, coat on or something?" He was like, "Yeah, my nigga." He pulled his car over in the middle of the Facetime, and uh, my man had a uh, uh, nineteen ninety six, I believe, USA coat, Dream Team. Which I'm like, "Yo, that shit hard as a motherfucker." USA hat. I'm like, frames and shit. We already sitting there talking shit. I'm like, yo, that shit go hard in the paint, my nigga. I know you in Australia representing us. And uh, I happen to have a, a towel he had brought uh, back for me that's got this uh, kangaroo and shit with boxing gloves on that I, they motherfucking probably thought I was Australian at the beach. But I represented. to talk with an Australian accent. I don't think <laughs> I got that mate. Other than mate, I probably fucked him up. But anyway, back to the story at hand. 
so, lights. <laughs> oh, that's the hey, that's a good that's a good uh yeah, he you need to say that. Um <laughs> but yeah, so moving um yeah, back to the story. This motherfucker, he called me right back, right? Like maybe a day or two or whatever. I was like, hey man, I got you a package on the way, my nigga. And he was like, Yeah, a couple coats and shit. I look up, the package beat us home. And uh, what I'm sporting right now, y'all, is uh, I believe this is a 20 year anniversary of uh, Team USA basketball. Uh, I guess it's the joint in London, I believe. Uh, the dream team in London. And uh, I got not only this jump, but another coat. And the bitches go hard as hell. Not only that, the care package came with like some Vapor Max shoes. It came with another coat that I, I thought was just one coat, but I, I left that in the archives right now. I ain't even pull that bitch out. And uh, so I had to, you know, put on some USA shit for Team USA. <laughs> Shout out to my nigga, Young Wilt. Um, speaking of Team USA. Yeah. To reiterate last podcast. Okay. Give a shout out, some praise to Mr. Noah Lows. Right. He plays in the 200 meter. He um, got the bronze. the bronze. Yeah. And in the 100 meter, he got gold. Yeah, but, shout out. Yeah, shout out from Noah Virginia. Lyles. Yep, from Virginia. Also, but without that being said, you know, Noah Lyles had a little controversy with him. I don't know if you was following. Yeah, it. he had COVID. Yeah, nigga said he had COVID and still placed uh, third place in it. And uh, of course, the way the internet worked, the internet moved at hundred miles an hour. He would have got gold in that too. Yeah, may, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but you know, you know, of course, they try to put us against each other. And Anthony Edwards and Noah Lyles, um, I think they. Represented by the same company, which is uh, Adidas, mm-hmm. and Anthony Edwards being the NBA player. I know you the peep game on some kicks for for Taj um, mm-hmm. to rock. Anthony Edwards is like I told everybody he's like uh, the prodigal son. I think he actually Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan's uh, son that he ain't claimed yet because nigga looked like Jordan. And for those of y'all who know, y'all know. Um, but they were trying to put them against each other. It was like you know he ain't come to cousin's uh, shoe reveal because. I guess he felt some type of way, which was not the case. But uh, yeah, shout out to to the Virginia athlete that we that we had you know cleared the air and brought his name out prior to him getting you know getting medals and getting placed. So shout out to Noah Lyles, man. Um, with that being said, I think I have a uh, a serious question, yo. And the serious question, just to con- continue to piggyback off the. Uh, the you USA basketball. The yeah, stay okay. on the Olympics. Because I got something I want to say about the Olympics. Okay. Yeah, so a serious question was uh, they asked uh, Carmelo Anthony. Um, I don't know if y'all seen it, but when they play Serbia, uh, that's a team that Jokic plays for. One of the guys that did the, the Carmelo Anthony uh, ta- uh, celebration with the three-point jump right there, right? And he looked at Melo, and Melo don't play in basketball anymore, right? And the USA guys took that shit to heart. And they end up torching them, you know, and they end up, you know, Serbia end up losing the game. This was like the game before the gold medal game or whatever. And uh, they asked uh, Carmelo Anthony, uh, what means more to you? Uh, um, NBA championship, which he never had, or a gold medal? He would say, hey, man. He said a medal means something totally different than the NBA championship. He basically was stating like, hey, man, like if it, like if I could represent my country, you know, on the, on the biggest stage, you know what I'm saying? This is like some Space Jam type shit. Why not win a gold medal? I mean, yeah, NBA championship, great. But NBA, uh, a, uh, a gold medal playing against the world is even better. So shout out to <laughs> Carmelo Anthony, who did go to uh, high school in Virginia as well, too, as well. So, yeah, what, so what, what did you have, uh, Nicole, on the board? Because I, uh, um, I, 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 I think I didn't exhaust it the whole uh, I think I, Paris Olympics. The, no, you did not. For the past 23 minutes, so, I think I have. What you got? Love you, Kelly. Love you, Steve. But oh shit, no, you ain't. <laughs> you talking about old girl? <laughs> oh girl. What was her name? B girl, B girl from Australia. Yeah, the, the B girl. I, what's her name? She's yeah. the same age as me. Was up there break dancing. Yeah, what's that? Ricochet. I don't know what her name was. I don't remember her name either. But I give. She got heart. She got out there on that stage and she did that shit. Yeah. Like, like, period. like if you she could She did shit that your typical 36 year old probably ain't gonna be able to do But that shit looked like She watched some shit on TV And was like fuck it I'm gonna try this shit 
Hell yeah. So she, I, I feel like she was uh, self confidence personified. Yeah. I feel like she did the shit just for fun. Oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and she ain't care that she lost every round up against everybody that she went up against. But, like, it was just funny as hell, especially like when I found out that this bitch my age. No wonder she looked like a grandma her, damn near doing this shit. That's her name. Uh, her name is uh, Miss Rachel Raygun from Australia. <laughs> from, from Australia. It was cool to see uh, the break dancing in the, in the, um, in the Olympics. But uh, sad to say that it's probably the last time I see break dancing in the Olympics because yeah, it's not going to be in the next one. Yeah, 2024 Olympics. But yeah, Rachel Raygun. From Australian mate. She's out there, bitch, doing the fucking Homer Simpson. Y'all know what the Homer Simpson is. When a nigga walk on, lay on one side of his body on the floor and like goddamn. Run in a circle. Run in circles. She was doing shit like that, y'all. And like, I couldn't do nothing but commend her. I'm like, yo, I'm 37. Most of that shit she was doing, shit, pop locking and shit. I don't think I could have did it. My, my ass would have been sore as fuck doing it. So shout out to Miss Rachel Ray Gun, yo. She it looked was, like she was having fun. That's all that matters. Yeah, it, 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 shit. And we all laughed at her ass. We thought we were laughing with her, but now, I mean, she didn't went viral. I'm quite sure she's going to probably take that momentum that she got now and do something with it. As a matter of fact, she might be coming to the United States to learn some real B boy dancing or whatever. But so they ended up pulling her car, though, out in Australia. She got back home and she came back. The, the shit she did at home on, on the internet was 100 times better than what she did on the goddamn uh, Olympic stage, yeah. So. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, moving right along, um, I don't even know, like how how the hell did we get here on this bit? Um, all right, so this is not a race check, y'all. I just wanted to kind of get y'all's attention and kind of just change the subject matter or segue. But uh, while we were away. Um, we like to first and foremost uh, give out a warm welcome and celebration to the uh, Alabama uh, boat brawl anniversary that took place while we were on vacation. I think it was August 5th. Yeah, I think it was August 5th. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, August 5th sound about right. 5th or the 9th, one of them days. And I believe when we went up to the beach last year, that's when it actually took place. But it was dope. Yeah. To, yeah, it, it, it was dope to kind of relive it. It was like, damn, I remember when that shit happened live. Yeah, it was crazy as fuck. Well, not live, but I remember when it happened in real time. So, yeah, we wanted to kind of, you know, just, you know, get uh, all the participants. The ones that got their ass whipped. Um, homeboy that did the whole breaststroke uh, off the fucking uh, boat to the dock to get there. Tired of the motherfucker. But... I ain't never know when I didn't see that. When I seen that, I was like, "Yo, I ain't never know a nigga could swim," until I saw that nigga swim, and it was in the middle of a fight. So he wanted he wanted smoke for that uh, that anniversary. So shout out to him too, yo. Whoever he is, yo, the, the young boy that that jumped off the boat and swam all the way to the goddamn dock, yo. Shout out to you, G. Um, but before we go a little farther, anybody throw any parties for it? Uh, I believe they did. They had like a lot of stuff on social media. People had like uh, uh, fold up chairs and shit, and they were celebrating. It was wild and shit. They was like, never forget this day. All that stuff. I feel like that joint was probably up there with August Juneteenth, 5th. yo. August 5th? Okay. I feel like it is up there with Juneteenth. Because it was like, it was crazy because like, ain't nobody knew anybody, but they uh-huh. seen the white people fucking with the captain dude. That was black, and they was yeah, like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah, and they right, came right. together, they united. And he was at work, so like, like don't never fuck with a nigga at work. He already don't want to fucking be here. Now you fuck with the man, yo. Come on, yo. So shout out, shout out to him. But serious question though, as well, Nicole, if you could pick anything that you did not see in the Olympics that you would like or need to be an Olympic sport, what will it be? I feel like there's a whole lot of sports that's in the Olympics. Can't pick one. But it's a whole lot that they don't really show on TV. Yeah, you gotta get that peacock. Peacock. Um, peacock had I, every. So I would like, get up every day at seven and watch peacock. I honestly don't know what sp- what sports are in the Olympics and which ones are not in the Olympics. To be honest with you. Oh, okay. Like okay. I know the main ones, like you know, gymnastics, swimming, diving. Fucking But just name a sport that you <laughs> think that you did not see that probably Fucking was. shot put. Shot put discus. I don't ever see that shit. 
I, you know what? I ain't see it in track and field. I didn't see it in, in uh, track and field this year. Yo, shot put a discus this year. Did not see that. I saw the, uh, the pole, vault. pole vault and shit <laughs> where the dude, the white dude, ended up faulting from, from the ball crossball hitting his dick. So it was crazy as hell. I was like, wow, son. Then they come out there with a semi and one goddamn do the pole vault and, and get. It was crazy to see it live though. I told you I would get up every morning at like seven in the morning and, and watch the Olympics and kind of go through. Uh, Peacock joint, and uh, when the uh, announce when it happened, announcers couldn't even really get their shit together on how he faulted. It was just like, yeah, you hate to see it happen. Yep, you just got to get a little bit, you know, over the ball, uh, over the bar a little bit. Was like, yo, y'all niggas see my man dick hit the goddamn uh, crossball. Just say it. I mean, it's on Peacock. I'm quite sure it ain't on live TV nowhere. So, <laughs> shout out to uh, that happening. Um, I know one thing what? going on social media. What's that? And looking it up, the fucking comments. The comments have been wild. Comments. <laughs> when, was, when I say the females, uh, I know they were was going in on them fucking comments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, mm, like to see that <laughs> stuff like that. The thoughts, the thoughts came out <laughs> in the comments. That's crazy. It's crazy you say that. They got a net in this motherfucker here. Um, but for me, he a polar head. Damn, that's wild. It, it'd be witty. I said, if you want to get entertainment, all you gotta just go to the comment section. Yo, the comment section would will, will, will not only you know what I'm saying, kind of you'll see who's on your wavelength and who ain't on your wavelength. And uh, yeah, that definitely was uh, something to remember in the, in the Olympics. But for me, as far as a, a sport that I want to see, be a Olympic sport, yo. Is a professional bull riding, yo. Because uh, I feel like we got some cowboys out here in Virginia that can goddamn, in the United States, that can goddamn ride them bulls and shit. I ended up catching it on a Saturday uh, after the Olympic was over. You know how they just had like trash TV and uh, of course the bull riding like right in the middle, like at noon. And them dudes was getting fucked up by them goddamn bulls. They even, but however, I don't know the one I was watching, it had to be the PBR. They got smart. You know, you used to have like the clown motherfucker sitting there like, oh, you can catch me. And when a nigga fall off or get knocked out and they try to make sure the man don't get gored by the fucking uh, bull. They now got a platform they can jump on now in the middle of the fucking uh, rodeo. They can jump on the platform and be saved because the bull can't jump high enough. So mm-hmm. shout out to <laughs> professional bull riding. I feel like that'd be a great Olympic sport. That'd be dope as fuck. Can you imagine all the different cowboys coming around from all different countries and shit? Be cool as shit. Maybe, Maybe that's just me. Maybe cuz need to try that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That be shit. He better get to practicing. Hey, that'd be funny as hell. That nigga's, hey, man, no cowboy now, yo. That'd be crazy as hell. I wouldn't try the bulls, yo. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> so, with that being said, should we go ahead and, 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 and keep the show rolling? Give me a hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> what? All right, so with that being said, y'all, I think we're going to segue um, to our kid tuition um, segment uh, as far as back to school goes. Hey, Taj, get a, yep, yep, yep. So as far as back to school goes, we're going to segue back to kid tuition. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome y'all back and also welcome my uh, my son and my daughter, Taj and Zendaya, uh, back to kid tuition. Yep. And uh, yeah. this has been the uh, <laughs> the first week of school, and uh, we're we gonna keep it brief because I really ain't got much that I want to ask. I mean, in your kid tuition segment, um, so like I always say, um, give y'all back to school. I want y'all to listen to this first. Casting period's over. Take a seat and breathe. Get your things out class. No cell phones, please. No cell phones, please. <laughs> That was a, have a teacher uh, like that. That was a teacher who uh, <laughs> who used one of the most wildest fucking songs 
to uh, get these kids off their damn cell phones. Uh, um, so back to school for y'all. Um, as Nicole on the boards, they always ask me to do segments, and then they do something different, and then they try to do the behind the scenes stuff on on what the hell they're doing. So what you got going on, Nicole on the boards? Huh? Excuse me. Oh yeah, go ahead and hit that then. Just gotta flip flip that uh flip it, and it'll say D I S P. Hit it, and then it's at bottom bottom left bottom left. See it? where your left thumb where your thumb is. Put your thumb back. You saw it, you hit it. All right, so you're good to go now. All right, so. Again, I don't know if the fucking camera is on me or not. It is. Uh, but yeah, so it's now kid tuition. And I, I, I hate not addressing the camera, not knowing it is on me because I can't see it. But you straight? <laughs> All right, so. Oh, so okay. it was on me because I was talking. I was watching the video, but uh, like everybody the else video. was. When the music, it was on them. Oh, okay. All right, so get your ass on the board, Nicole on the board. <laughs> and let's get started with, uh, with kid tuition. I'd like to thank y'all for, uh, like I said, tuning in to another, uh, I guess you can say excerpt of kid tuition. This is probably going to be sooner or later its own show in its own essence. It's going to have its own channel and things of that nature. <laughs> But right now it's just gonna be somebody's excited. About somebody that. excited it seems like, <laughs> but pretty. But it's gonna be. I ain't, I ain't gonna have shit to do with. It. It's gonna be kid tuition though, y'all. So shout out to Taj and Zendaya. <laughs> Summer break is now over, mommy. But floor you, is yours. I have some ideas. You have some good ideas. Uh, mm-hmm. but you can't you can't speak on them on, on on air. We gotta talk talk about that, you know, behind the scenes. So yeah, I know. All right, cool, cool. All right, so. It's in the main First, to do. How about like, we talk about how who wants okay. to go first? First, me. I'll go All first. right, Taj wants to go first. Yeah. You went first last time. All right, Taj. But what? Camera is on you and Daddy. Let's oh. put it on both you and your sister. Wait. So sit back, Dale. So Taj, okay, ready. how was your first day? Of middle school. My first day, I was really nervous. Oh. I didn't really know if I was going to make it to all my classes in time. And um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's it. So, what, what, how did you feel about switching your classes and stuff? It's really easy. At least, like, when I have to go from second period to third period... I have to go across the whole building, so yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Well, we'll get your sister, get herself together. She, 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 she clearly got a lot going on over there. Um, I got a, I got a button for that. It's called. Oh, brother! This guy stinks. All right. So you got your shit together, in there. Get loose your little attitude. All right, well, kid. Tuition is gonna gonna start in in with you. Um, so. Um, Todd, so you said you, your hardest thing as far as, you know, being worried about like your classes and things of that nature and how would you get there? How do you feel about your teachers, big dog? Uh, I got some good teachers. Okay. Um, my favorite was probably going to be, um, my English teacher and my science teacher. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Have you learned anything, uh, I guess noteworthy that you want to express about, uh, I guess your English and science classes? We got to do like a little project. It was like a DIY thing. Okay. Where we got to make our own decorations for the English teacher's classroom. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, did you? How, how much effort did you do? Because like it's this, it's this running joke on the internet, right? And um, I believe one of the boys that was on the Team USA Olympic team, I can't remember his name. But he didn't play not one minute or second in the NBA, uh, NBA the, in the USA men's basketball run during the Olympics, and he still got a gold medal. And he said it's like being part of a group project and do nothing. So, were you one of them? Well, um, the people, <laughs> the people that were in my group, it was like a random thing that was selected. Uh huh. And the people that were in my group, they wanted to do absolutely everything, so I didn't really get to do much. So you, so you was a uh, 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 buddy that uh, 
you basically didn't do nothing and, and reap the benefits. All right, so I want to let you know, and this just is a, a coachable moment, okay? Even though, you know, the team, you know, did a great effort, you know, the coach still always watching, so the teacher is always watching, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you always got to put in your best effort, put in some input, okay? Regar- I was still doing some stuff. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. That, and that's all I really wanted to, you know, kind of you know, add to that. Um, so Sometimes... Sometimes in them situations, you gotta bring in, bring out your inner Zendaya. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta try yeah, to be the center gotta, of the you show. Gotta, you, gotta, you gotta take control of the situation. Yep. You gotta bring out Zendaya is like a kid version of a mom or a kid version of a teacher. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta you like, make your make your presence be felt for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what was the best part of your week throughout school? I got to see one of my old friends that's in seventh grade now. Okay. I've only been able to talk to him over the game. Oh, wow. So that's what's up. So you got reacquainted? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Cool. Did you see any of your, did you get to see any of your friends that, might have been in your classes in elementary school that moved away and wasn't so did you see anybody like um what's his name Preston uh, yeah I saw him he's not in any of my classes so cool what's up I got a question for you so I already know what the best part of your day is it had to be lunch could you tell me about your tell us about your lunches or tell the, the viewer and I was about your lunches because you every day you came here you was like hey man I had this for lunch hey man <laughs> I had this for lunch too. So, talk you, about that. You would think that all he do at school is eat lunch. Hell yeah, for real. So, at lunch, <laughs> it's probably like the best thing I'm looking forward to at school because I have been like in like elementary school. They used to have like all these good lunches, right? Mm-hmm. They just got rid of them. And then mm. as soon as I get to middle school, we, they had chicken Alfredo, bro. It was amazing. Jeez, okay. I got a taste of my childhood. I it was hot. Chicken Alfredo, bro. And so your mom, your mom, ha- your mama half Italian. Maybe she can make you some Alfredo, man. You know, give me a day off, man. I'm tired of cooking. I feel like the lady at Popeyes every time I cook. Go ahead, though. So, <laughs> Just messing with you. <laughs> Todd said that he had pudding once. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We that's about the only pudding. day in um, elementary school we have pudding. Fridays, Thanksgiving. Oh so, wow! Oh, damn. We had pudding on uh, the first day of school and like the third or the fourth day of school because instead of like on the third or fourth day of school we didn't have pudding. We had strawberries with whipped cream on them. Oh, that ain't bad. That's in middle school. Dang, y'all lunch is better than mine in middle school. I don't know what I, I, I wanted the culinary arts class to be doing desserts or whatever for. Sadly, I gotta wait till care. next semester. Could be, could be. For culinary arts. Oh, right. That's one of your classes. That's the consumer science, right? I don't. The sound bar, right? Consumer <laughs> and science. You know, cooking ain't nothing but science. Could be. You know how they just try to throw different words in there to kind of throw you off till you get there. All right. Anything you want to add? Because we want to keep this kid tuition segment short. Because what, what what I want to do is, you know, kind of brainstorm with the kids, not only you guys, but also have you guys, you know, reach out to the kids in the community as well. Maybe your friends or, you know, family members that are in school, you know, in different grade levels and kind of put them on this as well. You know what I'm saying? For kid tuition. And then, you know, talk about some really some things that are really, you know, meaningful, you know, throughout not necessarily, I would say, your guys' childhood, but throughout you guys' lives, because right now, your current life is within your childhood right now. So to be able to talk about you know, different subject matters and things of that nature and kind of, you know, clear the air on that. So anything you would like to add before we, you know, move it on over to your sister, boss? Um, well, I got one story. Okay. Story time. So... We were, this was like a B-Day, and basically on B-Days, you have different, you have like different classes on B-Days. Okay. And I came from history. I was going to um lunch, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, I don't think it's it was lunch. lunch. I was going to a different, a different uh, block class oh. place. Was it here? fitness or PE? So. Because you got fitness, you got PE, then you got fitness, and then you have. I was going to Mr. U- Mr. U's class. So you were going, you were coming from history, going to Mr. U's class. 
Your create class. And you won't believe this. It's like the second or third day of school, right? Mm-hmm. Tell me why. In the hallway, there was two kids fighting, bro. Come on, man. Oh, oh man. <laughs> You saw, you saw yeah, a real life school a pen, fight. A pencil in their hand and had the other kid like buy the shirt, the collar of the shirt. God damn. damn. Oh, wow, yo. That is crazy. I don't believe Wait, shit. Why kids like it? Black kids. That's crazy. They had dread like dreadhead kids. I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Shout out to the dreadhead kids, Wait, man. Like kids? Shout out to the dreadhead yeah. kids. It's a- it was. Uh, I Romero and somebody I don't know their name. God damn, man. Come Dreadhead on. kids. PSA. Come on, Lakeview. Put a we camera better than that. Put a camera on me, man. So, this is a PSA. Just coming from your friendly neighborhood. Uh, come on, Dale. Chill with that. Um, y'all Dreadhead kids. Y'all got to... It's called in the blockage, man. Y'all got to cut that shit, man. Y'all got to cut that hair. Y'all got to do something. Parents, y'all, y- y'all got to step up to the plate, man. Ain't no sense in hell... It'd be the second day or the third day of school, and y'all did it acting like fucking clowns, man. So y'all need to get y'all shit together. I do apologize for using vulgar language during this kid tuition segment, but like, y'all need some direction, man. Like, for real. Like, act like you've been there at least once. All right? Back to you. Goddamn dreadhead kids, man. So, that's pretty much the whole story. So, yeah. Damn. Did did you did you sit around and watch the fight? No, nah, I just got to my class, so I wasn't late. I wish I could, but a teacher broke it up as soon as I got there. That's a good job, man. And, and, and that's where it's you knew what happened, but you still mind your damn business and kept it, kept the show rolling. So, you know what I'm saying? So how long were they fighting for? You think? Uh, I don't know, cause it was probably like as soon as the bell rang or something. About a couple like so it took me like. Minutes. About like 30 seconds to pack my stuff up and get out of there. Mm-hmm. So probably two minutes, maybe. Okay. Wow. I, I, two hey, minutes? I'm, I'm just surprised I'm hearing it now and it happened the second or third day of school. I so, didn't um, know nothing about it. And I also have a... Um, so for um, all y'all kids out there, that means you got about two minutes that you got to protect something. yourself. Yes, if somebody try to do something to you. Just slap him. But then y'all ain't got no books. I got laptops. I can hit him up with a, with a Chromebook. Put them to sleep, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and that's all you like to add, buddy? I got another story. You got another yeah, story? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, this is going to be my last story. Okay. But the story is, so basically, I've got to do PE and okay. then fitness, right? Mm-hmm. I get to fitness it's like all funny games. I'm in a classroom, chilling out and stuff, learning about the teacher. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And basically, for and I, we go outside, right? I thought we were going outside to play or something. No, we went to the football field and we we ran around the track for fitness. Yeah, I did like they we had to do four, but I did three because like. Because we had to go, so most of the most of the kids did three. One of them did like two of them did four. Oh, okay. Wow. How many did you do? He said three. 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 Okay. Good job, buddy, for getting a surprise shock to your so system. You did, so you did um three fourths of a mile. Good job. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good job. Did you run the whole time? Most of the time, yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to run. I kept them. like a little jog though. Full, full, full outfit instead of having gym clothes. Know, which would have been yeah better, um, I think. Uh, at least you said, and that's what. So I can't segue from that, son. That's why when I went to high school, we always had what we like to call balling shorts up under our pants. Back in the day when we grew up, our clothes was maybe two sizes bigger than what we wore, so we was able to put a whole a whole pair set of, of pair of shorts up under our shits and be ready to ball at any point in time. Um, in case you know it was any kind of fitness, anything like that that went took place, but we're gonna have to hurry up because we got Zendaya over here just really acting like a uh, what you call one of them damn um, lightning bugs in the bottle. I don't know what the hell wrong with her today. Uh, um, Firefly. Yeah, yeah, she acting real wild over there. Like she got That's a lot to say. Bug. All right, so Firefly. Firefly. Zendaya, to you. 
you have the floor now, finally, because you we have really hard to kind of contain yourself over there. Um, but mommy can get you right. What you got for her as far as you just looking at a sloppy mess. There you go. Get it together. Get it together. There you go. All right. So how was your first day of school being the only the only one in the school? No brother with you. I don't know. Bro. It was a long time ago. It's in the past now. I'm not supposed to remember that. Because it was Come on, bro. Monday. You don't remember Monday? I do. Good. Huh? Good. It was good. What'd you do? Um, at the end of the day, every day, um, we get to have some candy out of her, out of my teacher's candy bucket. Yeah, that teacher's amazing. Miss Walker. Yeah. And yeah. on Fridays, she writes the word Fun Friday. And if we lose all of our letters, we can't have Fun Friday because it's like a recess, but it's an indoor recess after our recess. Wow. But if so we... did y'all get to have Fun Friday today? Mm-hmm. You did? How many letters did y'all lose? Four. Four letters? How y'all lose letters? It's like being on the loud. Oh, so the whole class, if the, if the class is loud, you lose a letter? Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's only on Fridays. Oh. So, you have any new kids in your class that you haven't had? Not yet, but on Monday there is. You got a new person starting Monday? Mm-hmm. Cool. Their what name is Noble. Noble? Mm-hmm. All right. And... It's a boy. So you had a little school project to do already. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about that? So it's basically like you bring stuff from your house that like you like... And then you put it in the brown bag, then you take it to school. Then you take it out the bag and you show it to everybody and you and you tell everybody like what's a what's it about? Like a, it's supposed to be about you. Oh yeah. And it's all called, about bag, it's right? called yeah. I was about to say that. <laughs> and what and what did you bring, Zendaya? I brought my Lego unicorn if you can pass it to me. I brought a shell, which we're probably not going to bring right now. Yep, you brought a shell. Yep. I brought a... I brought a shark egg. Oh, yeah, you brought a shark egg for the beach? Or as I call it, a mermaid purse. Oh, wow. Okay, shout out to you. This is what it looks like. Okay. I like a unicorn. I'll take oh, it. she didn't. She didn't dropped it already. Uh, no, and what else did you bring? Okay, this is what it looks like. Mm-hmm. And what else did you bring, baby? Um. Are oh, you gonna show everybody the shark egg we got from vacation? And I brought um a, my mood ring and this Afro me metal necklace. Okay. Half mile me metal and the. In the move ring, okay. Then the shark egg. Mm-hmm. Just don't lick your fingers after touching that. Your sand stuck in it. It's okay. That's all right, yep. And what else you bring? And then the biggest she saw we saw. At the Outer Banks, right? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And how about you tell the story about that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. That might be it. Can, let's let Daddy start this Can I start story your story off? off? Okay. No. So, we're going to start Daya's story no. off. 
So the way so the way the way it went down for me, I can only give y'all my perspective and my take. So we end up I end up telling today, hey, this is what we're gonna do, baby. Before we get on the bus, um, why don't you go ahead and grab your little grab bag so you can take it to school. All on me back. And um that way you know where it's at. And I put the bag right in front of her, right? Mind you, I'm getting ready to go to work too. So I get her the bag, the long go off, go to the bus stop. And before you know it, we get to the bus stop. I think I'm talking to mommy on the phone or whatever we doing. We get to the bus stop. I'm chilling. Look at Zendaya get all the way to the bus door and just stop and look at the bus driver right in the window of her soul. And then she looked back at me and was like, to the me and the bus driver, like, no, and it ran back. Um, she running back. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? She's like, I forgot my bag in the house. So I had to get her ass in the house and then drop her off to school, right? So mind you, with this year's school, I don't know why it is, but it's starting a little bit later than it was last year. Yeah. Um, it starts at 8.20 now. Almost, it used to start at 8.09. Yep. So I almost got my black ass late to work. Not that I really cared, but I just didn't want to be at work at late. I'm be to work um, late. I want to be at work on time. So we finally get to the school after they open the doors or whatever. Slowly but surely... Um, you know, I talked to Zendaya, you know, give her a little pep talk before we, uh, you know, split part our ways. And then she proceeds to get out of the truck and then she goes into the building. And so I there, tell the rest of the story. There you go. The floor is yours. So when I got out of the car, I was sitting by and I saw my friend Lauren. I said, hi. And then she said she didn't hear me because we were on the bus today. And, I, and she said, why didn't you say hi to me when um, you, you had that brown bag in your hand? Because mm-hmm. she was on the bus either because she missed the bus. Okay. And then she said she didn't hear me, and I was like, oh. It was like, it was either today or yesterday. I think it was today. Okay. But then when I was walking... I fell on the ground, and this knee got um, scraped on the ground really bad. Yeah, you're good at doing that, scraping your knee. Okay, it's all good. They, they could probably see and it. They get the gist, yeah. Then, then that one was a bleeding mouse. And this one had a couple of scratches, but it was a, in okay. your hand and your elbow. Then my hand right here. Okay. <laughs> then... Your this side of your uh, elbow. elbow, yep. And I think that's that it. might be it. That might be and it. my finger got scraped a little bit. Right. I don't get how you keep getting hurt on your knees. That's because I'm tough. And you're not. Okay. <laughs> so but but the wild part about it, y'all, was that uh um, like her mommy. So when she got but back the, home from I'm not school. Done. I'm not done. Oh my bad. Then I went in the class, then I then I um was getting my stuff out, and then after I was done, cause I, cause all I had to do was just all I had to do is just take out my folder, my lunchbox. That's all I did. I put it on my desk. Then I told my teacher that I fell, and my knee got scratched a little bit. Well, this knee got scratched a little bit, and that one got scratched a lot. And then she wrote me um, a pass to go to the nurse. Then she, good thing nobody was in there. But okay. she um, cleaned it up. And then when, when we were in our little groups mm-hmm. one day, we were in our little groups. And then my band-aid started to come off because it was getting wet of the stuff that she cleaned it with. So then I had to go back because it came off. And then the next time I went, she squirted it, squirted the stuff to clean me in my eye, but I had glasses on, so it was okay. Okay. And she said it was an accident. She didn't mean to. But then she cleaned it. She cleaned your glasses too? What? She cleaned your glasses too? Just, oh! And cleaning glasses? <laughs> mm, kinda. Oh. <laughs> okay. But then we went back. 
then it started coming off at home. Because when I was on the bus, it was already about to come off. Mm. There's only one side hanging on. So then when we got home after I took my shower, I took, after I took my shower, I put my pajamas on. And then um, I put a Band-Aid on. You didn't put no Band-Aid on. You did. Mommy, Dr. G. Yep, good job, Daya. And now it's scabbing up a little bit. But it was funny. Like, it happened yesterday, actually. Yeah. Yep, yesterday, yep. And then me and Lauren talk on the bus when, today. Um, when Hoggy came home from work, the first thing she says is, Did you see me fall? <laughs> yep. She said, Did you see me fall? I said, No, I didn't see you fall, baby. When did baby. you fall? When did you fall? She said, After I got in the truck. Um, I think Lauren's aunt was dropping her off at school. And then she was around when I fell, and Officer Reedy was around when I fell. So they asked me, was I okay? And I said, yeah. And then, like, it didn't hurt. But just kind of stinged a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. Why are you looking at me? Yeah. I don't know. So, so the grand scheme of but, the story goes like this, y'all. I asked Zendaya when I, was, I got home off. from work, and I was cooking dinner. I said, Zendaya, how... Did you show everybody everything in your bag? She said, I broke my shell. I said, how the fuck did you break the shell? I fell. And the shell was broken. I said, well, you go tell your mama. And I told her, I said, hey, I kind of willed it. Because I said, hey, don't fall and break that shell. And that's exactly what the hell she did. So. And I said, yeah. and I said it wasn't my fault. She put it in the bag. I put a smaller shell in there. The other, the other shell was turned. It wasn't as big. That bitch would turn to dust with all that weight on there, girl. So... <laughs> You luckily so, you didn't get stabbed by the impaled not my fault, by that shit. Though. I broke it. Paper bag. Guess what? Plus, Mommy it was super glued it back together for you. Yeah. Super glued it. Yeah. How do you super glue something? With super glue. Yep. With super glue. Yep. It's super glue. What's super glue? Speaking of super glue. It's glue that sticks a lot. Tell that story about the <laughs> super glue incident when you was younger. Oh, so yeah, back back in the day, I guess this is kind of be a kid tuition story. But my twin brother, um, Karel, yeah. he uh, was pretty big on like uh, doing like model cars and shit like that, right? And uh, somehow, some way, I guess he had played with the model cars, and we you know, you know gluing them together, or something came off, and he was gluing oh, yeah. together. And uh, either he had the right kind of glue, or maybe he decided to use some super glue. But anyway, y'all know how to super glue. Either get old one or two, it's starting to run out. And, you know, you treat it like that Elmo's glue as a child. You just squeeze that shit, right? <laughs> and he ended up squeezing the motherfucker. And as he was squeezing, he was like, hey, I think the glue coming out the side of it. And his fingers would stick, right? And he'd just be trying to get his fingers apart. Anyway, somehow, somehow I guess he squeezed it the last time and the glue flew in his face. And the guy <laughs> on his eye, and then he closed his eyelid. And he was trying to cry. one of those tears coming out because his eyes got super glued together. So shout out. <laughs> Mommy, any questions you want to ask today about her first week of school so we can go ahead and wrap up uh, this segment of kid, to, kid tuition? I don't think so. No, you have to ask me a question. I don't think I, I did ask you a question. Do y'all have any questions I want for me? You to again. So, I'm, I got a whole diarrhea? statement for you. Give yeah, me it. So, okay, so. You know how all week long, when that long go off yeah. in your room, <laughs> yeah. and you turn the alarm off, yeah. and then you lay your ass in the bed? Mm-hmm. Lay your head, and then lay your head, lay your mommy, head down. Mommy's alarm goes off in her room, so they wakes me up so I can make sure you're getting up. And I'm sitting, lay there, and I'm like, hmm, I don't hear his ass getting ready. So then I get up and I go to your room and you're laying the fuck down. Getting all snuggly back in the fucking bed, right? Getting all right back, back in that warm spot yeah. on the cold side of the pillow. He turned the so, pillow over. Every day, or almost every day, should I say, I had to come in there, Todd, get your ass off the bed. <laughs> Today, you did a great job. You did really good. That's because it was a Friday. But you better continue that Friday feeling Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But I can't. I, it ain't no I can't because 
Got a whole ultimatum. Here we go. You don't get your ass up in the morning like you're supposed to, and I got to come in there and wake you up. No games. What? No games. <laughs> no game. And guess what? Mommy go to work after you go to school. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take the Switch with me. I'm going to take the Oculus with me. I'm going to take the Xbox controller with me. I'm going to take the tablet with me. So that means you got to get yourself together, man. That's just a part of growing up. So nobody said you can't lay back down. I know. It's just that's what I'm used to. You don't lay back down. Until you are ready. I know. Like I told you. But on... You get up. I, I told you you can get up. Brush your teeth. Piss. Take a poop. Make sure you put your deodorant on. Get dressed. Come downstairs. Shoes on. Book, computer on your book bag. Whatever you need for school. Ready? Then you can lay your ass on the couch and go to sleep till your alarm goes off to go out the door. And then you... And then he out here. The couch is not that comfortable. But it ain't supposed to be comfortable. You're supposed to be able to progressively wake your butt up and get ready for the day, buddy. That's Look. part of that's part that's part of being growing up. Like 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 the rug rat said, now you got responsibilities, man. You gotta get your sister off the bus now. Responsibilities. You got you got you gotta get yourself together. So even though she can get off the bus by herself. Yeah, but it that doesn't matter. matter. You got too many you have too many Sick people out here that are kidnapping kids. It's praying on. You said all the kids we saw at Walmart at the vacation that was sitting on that wall. Yeah. Have you seen me? You want that to happen to your sister? No. How I easy mean. would it be for someone to snatch her up? Very easy, right? No, mm-hmm. she heavy as shit. Yeah. She's taking, <laughs> <this. laughs> <laughs> taking put my shoulder out of place trying to pick her up. Daddy, pick me up, girl. Bye. Um. Bleh. But no, but but in all seriousness though, like. It, this is a rite of passage. It, if if you want more freedom, you got to have more responsibilities. Like I told you before, with, like Spider Man goes, with great power comes great responsibility. And if mm-hmm. you want to have uh, what we like to call um, uh, freedom, you then you got to be able to show us that you are eligible for that freedom, like having a cell phone and things of that nature. It just don't it just don't appear out of the air. You got to earn that. Okay. How am so, I going to earn this now? We talked about that offline. But this is the next segment. Um, uh, in the last segment of Kids to Tuition, what you got there before? Um, so, I'm going to teach you our class rules inside our classroom. Okay. So, our classrooms inside our classroom is neutral respect. Does anybody know what neutral respect means? Respect for everyone. I, mean, I don't know. No. That's not really what it means. Well, what tell us mean? what it means. What is it? So, wait. It's a mu- mutual respect, yeah. Neutral or neutral? What, an M or an N? An M. That means you res- respect each other. I know, but that's not how I like give it. respect to get respect. All right, so it's what you get. Act, this is how our class is. We say treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. The golden rule. Yeah, that's why it's in PE. But then we have right to pass. And I don't think y'all know what right to pass means, so I'll just tell you. Right to pass means, like, if some if your teacher asks you a question... Like, sometimes you don't have to answer it if you don't feel like it today. If you don't feel like it or you don't know the answer? No, you don't feel like it today. Oh, so you do like Dave Chappelle say, I plead the fifth. One, two, three, four. Fifth. Go ahead. Okay, but it's like if we have a, because we have a mood chart, we have to fill it out every day. And basically, you can like, based on the mood chart, she can tell if like you um she can tell if you like need a, a bit of time to c- 
calm down or something. Because we have this thing, like, um, ready to learn, calm, happy, tired, sad, angry. There's one more. Excited? No. She said she was going to put the disgusting one. Discussed one on there, but she said she didn't have any room, so she couldn't put it on there. Mm. Okay. Because we have too much students. Okay. So there's not enough room for just one little bar, because that's all we have if we just put it right there. But that's how she tells, like, if hey. you need a second to yourself. Did you go to your Create class this week? No. Oh. I don't know when we're starting. Oh. You excited to start? Yes, but I, the only thing I know is that I I don't know if any of my friends did, though. Well, I well, know one I'm thing. I'm part of the 1% that made it. I know one thing. we going to be going to the Gotcha Gala this year. Somebody's not gonna forget all about it like somebody else. Did. Bro, get out of here, bro. Taj. Mm-hmm. I forgot it was Taj. that day. I'm sorry, and I was crying because I missed it. Oh, ticket right there. Ticket right there. Now you can't even. You can't, can't even, even tell redeem. us you got the ticket. Hey, maybe you can sneak in next year. <laughs> <laughs> he probably be like ten times the size of all them old four friends. Zach Shane Middle School. All right, so moving right along. <clears throat> excuse, excuse me so, for, for the call. I can tell you all of it. Well, you got to rapid fire. Okay, I got more. I got more. Right. Right to pass. We already did that one. Then. Right to pass. Then we have, we did mutual respect. Then. We have active listening. Okay, great job. So right. active listening means... <laughs> I'm trying to sand man the hell out of this junk. Like, so, I'm about to get the broom and go... Y'all, I'm, I'm going to show who the sand man was on the Apollo, all right? So it, active yeah. listening means... Okay. So you keep your eyes on the speaker, your body's still, oh. your ears are listening, and... <laughs> You about the worst of my old co host mm-hmm. in here. All right, so moving right along, we're gonna go ahead and keep it moving. All right. So with that being said, Day, I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, I got with, something uh, to say. With uh, daughter, but let me let me Add get to, to this first, left. okay? Let, let me get past this first, and we'll, we'll have you write them down for the next segment, okay? okay? But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and segue to a dad joke, okay? Just so we can wrap up kid tuition. Like I said, you guys, y'all gonna get your own little platform soon, where y'all can you can sit there and you can. Stare at the camera and move around and rub on the microphone and make all kind of staticky sounds on your own, okay? That's... Yeah. But with that being said, you ready for a dad joke? Yep. Yes. I said, are y'all ready for a dad joke? Yes. yes. You ready for a dad joke? Give me a hell yeah. Hell Give me yeah. a hell yeah. yeah. What? What? Oh, I said, ready for a dad joke? Give me a hell oh, yeah. Thank you, Dad. I appreciate that. Mm. All right, so Dad Joe, y'all ready? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, and this kind of is a, a very serious Dad Joe, okay? Okay. Just in case you're out here in the world. I know y'all growing up, right? But this one says, if you ever encounter a giant, make sure you use big words, okay? Oh, get out of here, bro. <laughs> and you didn't get it? I get it. You got it? And, 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 yes. and being that... Uh, Right now, it is the end of August and coming into September, so y'all know what that means. Taj's favorite time of the year, football time. Um, he no, hates it's it. not. Um, but this is a good uh, segue from that, okay? And it says, two things why, uh, it says, why is it always cold in stadiums? And this is for Mommy as well. Hmm. Give me a second, I think. Uh, excuse me again. Just like your mom, girl. All right, so the reason why it's always cold in the stadiums is, is because they're full of fans, okay? So just in case y'all did not know that, oh. that is dad jokes for this uh, kid tuition this week. 
Uh, Taj, you had one thing you wanted to add, all right? Dad, you got the one thing you can add, and then we're going to wrap well, this thing up. Okay. It's short. So, my one thing I, I'm going to add today is, so we had an assembly yesterday, right? Okay. The assembly, it was about behavior and stuff, and they said, if you if you behave good and stuff, right? You get, like, these points, right? Mm-hmm. And since you get, like, these points, you can, like, cash them in for different <laughs> stuff, like being able to sit with one of your friends. And they also got shout-outs on there. Oh, like yeah. Like, Instagram shout-outs on, like, the page, right? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And basically, I just, I just got 21 points today. Oh, wow. Cool. Awesome, though. Now, how how did you earn the 21 points? For being good. And, like, the teachers can, like, give you the points. Oh, so each teacher can give you points. Uh-huh. I can Let's, try. I, I'll pull okay. it up on the Chromebook later. All right, awesome. That's, that's good to Let's hear, Let's give Todd a big round of applause. All right, go ahead, Dale. Say what you want to say. Okay, so it's really short. Okay. So I have something to tell everybody who's watching. Okay. Always stick with your buddy. Okay. And never leave a thumbtack where you're going to sit. Good job. Okay. And I learned that from a book. Awesome. You, do you remember the title of that book? It was a police officer with a dog. Hmm. It starts with a B, I know. It starts with a B. Okay. Well, you have to bring that back. All right. And if you guys had to give, it, just give and. one shout No, no ands. If you have to give one shout out. What will your shout out be for this week? And then we're going to go ahead and end t- kid tuition. You guys can go on about your day. Go watch your little videos, play your games. So, Dave, so, you, start, you start with your shout out I first. Was bad you, to yeah, say because it. you're a little long winded. I was about to say it when you cut me off. So, <laughs> the person I re- that like, read the book was Officer Reedy. So, shout out to Officer Reedy. Oh, wow. Gosh. I like that. Shout out to whoever's making the school lunch because it's amazing. Oh, all right. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank y'all again for tuning in to Kid Tuition. Um, Zendaya had to get her own standalone show where she can just keep coming up with more and more ideas as we try to sandman her off of the uh, what's the name of the book? Um, well, I don't. I know the name of the police officer. His name is Officer Brock. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to have to... You want to say bye? Bye. 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 See you next time. On what? See you all next time on Kid Um, Tuition. Kid Tuition. Actually, Twin Tuition presents Kid Tuition. All right, good job. Our favorite air presents Kid Tuition. All right, good job. Good job. All right, back to Daddy. All right, so... That was very difficult in nature. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad you guys was able to, you know, hold on a little bit. Uh, we are dealing with an eight-year-old and... A talkative eight-year-old. A talkative eight-year-old, which is great. Um, she 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 does do her own thing. Hey, make sure we turn that mic off um, just to make sure we um, turn that mic off just in case um, we get a phone tap or two or three. It all depends. Hmm? No, you're good. You it's this. fine. Uh, it's muted, yeah. You, you got to turn it off. I know, I just um, pull it off. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, um, like I said, we back in full effect. Like it, it's a new look. It's a it's a it's a new sound with uh uh twenty tuition presents clear the air. Uh, for your those of y'all who just tuning in, um, I go by the name of Hoggy, and I am surrounded by uh. My partner in crime, uh, my ace, my coach, confidant, my wife, um, Nicole on the board. So just give her a shout out as well. Um, but I know what y'all came here for, man. Because y'all always come here for it every week. And um, it's, it's starting to take 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 flight, y'all. Take, take traction um, within the interwebs, um, on the internet, things of that nature. But the music spotlight, y'all. I, that, that's that's really what y'all came here for, so I wanted to kind of you know. 
set the mood as well. And it is a couple of uh, artists that I do have in heavy rotation. And the reason being is because uh, it's all about the relationship, y'all. Like, everything else is going to come, but without the relationship, nothing can grow, right? And I say that to say this. This week's Music Spotlight happened, I happened to hear it when it first came out. And I was like, this song going to be dope. And um, I'm quite sure when the brother put the song together, he was like, yo, this song is dope as hell. And we ended up on vacation, the cold on the boards. We uh, kind of, sort of reenacted this shit, right? <laughs> and um, without I further did. ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and make sure I got all my stuff oh, my on the dear. boards, shit, right? Shit, we doing that shit. Yeah, it, it, it was so, yeah, shout out to Nicole on the boards. It was all her idea. She was saying, hey, we fucking doing this shit. But uh, shout out to my man uh, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Eco uh, Ecclesi. From the 704 Eco Ecclesi. Um, he is self-proclaimed, but I can kind of say he is as well. And there's a lot of heavy hitters out there in Charlotte. But he is the best rapper in Charlotte. And this song is coming straight from his latest project called Booming. Ladies and gentlemen, Eco Ecclesi. Booming. Let's go. Thank you, thank you, huh? Welcome, welcome. Yeah. We booming, baby, baby, we booming. Uh, uh, we booming, uh, baby, baby, we booming. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Well, all right. I like to thank y'all. This beat hit harder than a paintball behind them jail walls. I hope my niggas don't get thanked, dog. It's been a while. But who the hell said that I can't ball? I am me. I think they mad because I ain't y'all. Cash money, but also mixed in with the tank, dog. A real shooter. I'm kind of like my nigga crank, dog. All that behind the back talking, I'd rather have a face off. Give me space, dog, or else furniture get the movement. Black lives matter, but I'm guessing you missed the movement. It's like GNG. We've been out here and pushing humans to all humans. From America out to Munich. Before you rock clean, my nigga, you gon' have to tune it I'm sick, dawg, I don't know nothing about it mean shit It's real, dawg, I don't know nothing about cartoon shit Bugs Bunny, all I know is I love money up, Makes no difference whether it's your club money I'ma get it, especially if it's right in front me But you ain't got a front me, I'ma pay that shit ahead K.I.D., that still stand for kill it dead Niggas rob, still a cheat, they get ahead But all I heard is whatever to get the bread All that assumed and the rumors that was said We booming, nigga Put the rest of that shit to bed All that assumed and the rumors that was said We booming, baby, put the rest of that shit to bed We booming, baby, yeah, we booming, eh, eh We booming, nigga, yeah, we booming, eh, eh We booming, baby, yeah, we booming, eh, eh I'm back, dawg, and I can't cut these niggas slack, dawg You can jack off, go beat your meat, and you can whack off The difference between me and you, I get the cat, dawg Another cartoon, but it ain't no pun intended Rapping while I run the hood, so I ain't coming with it I said what I said, disrespect Respect was unintended. You're playing me, don't leave your woman unattended. It might not be me, but some nigga be running it. Watch your castle, watch the crown, and watch the throne. They gon' show you, cause in a snap it could be gone. I don't know Toto, but I just know that we ain't home. Throw your boy some pussy, and throw my dog a bone. I'm long and strong. You can ask your bitch, nigga. We don't trip over money because we all some rich niggas. Ditch diggers, no takers, just give em. You call me Big Cleese, boss, call me Lil Chica. Real money, your niggas moving real. Real funny, real funky, look like some walking dead zombie. Real bummy, dropped out some real dummy. The Fresh Prince home nigga and Uncle feel hungry. <laughs> 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 the best rap in Charlotte. The best rapper. Niggas tryna play me like I ain't that nigga. Well, let me set the record straight. I am that nigga. I am back, nigga. I am black, nigga. The checks in the mail and I'm getting back with ya. What a fact checker. Red and black checkers. I'm eating right now, nigga. Where you at, checkers? The only one ever. Ain't no one better. Good spella. I ain't missing one letter. I come from Charlotte where we listen to Bonnetta. Yeah. Cool, rich, and smart, and boy, my clever. Dough, bread, or cheese, just give me my cheddar. That boy about to freeze, so give me my sweater. Nah, that ain't enough, so give me my leather. Gym, jewels, and gold, I really got treasure. When it comes to flows, I really bring pressure. And no need for thank yous, cause it was my pleasure. Damn, son, where'd you find this? I know what it is, man. Y'all know who y'all rockin' You are now rockin' with the best rapper in Charlotte. Please, 
Well, I'm straight out of the HV, right off of the Echo. I drive a crooked hill, but I'm low on the Petro. Hit up the Metro. Boy, I feel special. Got my degree, but you know I'm still ghetto. Climb real levels, fought off real devils. They dug up my past and they didn't use shovels. Well, y'all was in the club, ho, I was working doubles. Well, y'all was working snub, no, I was working knuckles. Make sure your car shuffle and have a smart hustle. Use your mind first, man, don't get your heart rougher. Pick up the bag, it should be a large double. Me and my swag always make a sharp couple Keep your business low, don't you let them narcs fuck you Blood in the water, but make sure them sharks duck you I think he mad I gave his bitch a hard muscle I heard that you're broke and you're having car trouble The best rapper in Charlotte The best rapper in Charlotte What time is it, please? 11.45, time to get live, 10.5, now that's the shoe size, what's the room size, this shit is huge guys, on the news live, just reporting true lies, rap with the shit, who are these news guys, make rap a threat, that's how you lose lives, can't trust them hoes that like to use guys, at the hotel, chilling in my pool slide, eating Rotel while I'm by the pool side, producers ain't giving that bottle boom by, and lord am I happy that auto-tune died, don't just let them use you, you gotta use God Might have to pull a LeBron, that's when you move squads You're living more like a bum, you need a new job No one believes you, son, you're just a true fraud You're just a rerun man and you can ask Rod I'm the best rapper in Charlotte You are rocking with the best rapper in Charlotte See what I'm saying now, nigga? Pick a plan, stick the plan, even if it didn't pan out like you thought, you really gotta give a damn. Many scams come from grown men in a minivan. Africans, Indians, brought into a different land. Fuck the broad, use the rubber, gotta keep that mission lit. Never struggle, always hustle like them boys in Michigan. Go broke, get rich again. Watch what you sitting in. Don't sell your soul just for the sake of fitting in. This dream that I'm living in don't require middlemen. Man, that boy cold. I'm like Chicago City wind. Write it down, get a pen, learn it, then go tell a friend. Open up that closet, that's where they hide them skeletons Thank God for melanin, shout out to melanin Please give them hell again, coming out my shell and shit Gotta keep the devil out, never let the devil in Going against Cleasy, you might as well just mail it in The best rap in Charlotte What you say, motherfucker? Who are you? The best rap in Charlotte Cleasy! Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome y'all back to Twin Tuition Presents Clear the Air. And that music spotlight this week was by the one and only, the 704s, Eco Ecclesi, from his latest uh, album called Boomin'. I gave y'all a two, a two for one this time, y'all. Y'all heard the track Boomin', and y'all heard the best rapper in Charlotte, man. So, shout out to Eco Ecclesi, man. <laughs> Could I please have more, Continue sir? Continue to grind, man. Hey, this dude is a talent. For y'all who don't know, y'all go ahead. He's on all streaming platforms, man. Go ahead and load him into your playlist. Load him into your deck, man. So when y'all somebody tell y'all to pass the ox, man, go ahead and pass the ox and, and have that booming plan, man. Eco Ecclesi. So back to the podcast at hand, the cold on the board. You said, uh, what you say uh, about that song, man? You, you was the one, oh. right? So, as soon as you played it, uh -huh. I heard the shit. I was like, that nigga said, Rotel by the poolside. Uh -huh. I said, fuck, let's make some fucking Rotel and yeah. eat that shit by the poolside and make a video send that shit to my nigga. So, that's, definitely, so that's what we did. So, definitely exactly what the hell we did, yo. We was at the poolside. And I, I would say, so back to the vacation, um, when it came to the poolside. I don't know how it'd be happening, but like my wife for Christmas, she ended up buying one of these JBL speakers, big ass joint. Not the big, big boy jump, but a big speaker. Probably one of those big ones coming. And uh, so anytime I come out there, and I don't know, I guess it's just the uh, the way the building's laid where the pool is, but and how the water, how huge the pool is, but when the music be hitting off the water and the speaker and the buildings, that shit just, the whole neighborhood, you, you were, hey, we turned that motherfucker out, yo, so. Uh, and we, and of course we had uh, the best rapper in Charlotte playing uh, on more than one occasion out there um, during our, our vacation. So like I said, once again, shout out to Eco Ecclesi, man, for being, he, he made the music spotlight once more, man. So, hey, I, I appreciate that, big dog. 
Um, moving right along, uh, Nicole on the boards. Let's see where we at. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, call to action to all uh, men and women, young and old, children, grown, whatever it is. If you do music, man, we I got this uh, call to action to all artists. If you want to be featured on our show, y'all, just send us a DM and uh, with your music. You know what I'm saying? And um, let's clear the air, man. This is... This program has been put together by me, but it's for y'all, yo. And I want to make us a field of dreams where we can kind of promote ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Not go to everybody else out here that feel like they done made it or, or, or they done made it in different podcasts and things of that nature and want to beat you over your head. Come holler at me, man. If you got music, you got talent, whatever it is, come holler at me, man. And we're going to definitely, um, we're going to climb this ladder together. And then when we get to the mountaintop, it's going to be not only a table, but it's going to be a table with more than one seat at the fucking uh, table, man, where we all doing something different in our gifts and in our walks of life. So calling all artists. You want to be featured? Let me know something. And let's clear the air. Um, so with that being said, man, this is on some funny shit. Um, it's kind of trivia as well. But I got a question for you, Nicole, on the boards. And this question is... Who is the only celebrity that has two viral crying moments on the internet? How the hell you think I'm going to know some shit about a celebrity? You're right. So with that being said, for the ladies, ladies and gentlemen, who those y'all who, who watch and listen and learn, who watch this thing, I'm questioning y'all haven't seen it, but the answer is Tyrese. So hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. I was thinking a female. So yeah, no. So it it it, it is uh, Tyrese. Let me see if I can find the audio. For you. No, that ain't it either. Where is it at? Uh. Why he was crying the first time? Huh? Why he cried the first time? Why did he cry the first time? It was a lot of grief. Like I think about you know, brother Paul Walker, and I think about John Sing Ray, John Singleton. Your mother divorce, your divorce, divorce. Both of yeah, my people, sisters people don't look died. At, yeah, your sisters. People don't look at divorce as grief, but you did. You lose things. You know, you probably lost a lot of friends when you went through your your, your mental health breakdown. Are you really, really, really? Have you really taken the time to, to to deal with all of that grief, or do you just try to stay busy to avoid? I'm doing the best I can with every 24 hours I get. I don't mean to laugh. That's it. Get some tissue from brother. No, I don't need no tissue. Black men cry. That's right. You know, fuck a tissue. Every 24 hours I get, I'm doing the best I can. Beautiful Pain, 1992. There is no square footage I could ever live in. There is no rims, no jury, and no car. There is no net worth. There is no press release. There is no co-star. There is no collaboration in the world that could ever replace my mama. Real shit. I could ever feel the void of what it's like to wake up and get married and want to be in something for the rest of your life. And it goes away. You're making me cry. Get Tyree some tissue. Yeah, I, can. I don't need no tissue. Man, you, you ask, man. Yeah. Oh, man. I love you You've too, been holding Do this you in the understand whole interview, how though. much power it is and letting it go? Yeah, because you've been holding it the whole interview. Okay. I've been watching you. You yeah. asked me the question. I did, but I mean, I'm, still, I'm getting you You should have never asked the question I love you, if brother. you didn't want to see. I love, I love you, brother. I love you. I love you. How hard it's you. been to get through. I love you. I love you, black man. Okay, do you not cry? Absolutely. You might not bring it to the radio. Absolutely. Absolutely. But this is what being grown is. Thank you, brother. I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I need one. My makeup going mess up. I need Hear me. My cassette Hear is me. sitting today. See? Hear me. Black men cry. When divorces happen, women aren't the only one that are devastated. When a miscarriage happens, mm. women are not the only one that you should be checking on. Mm. When you can't put food on the table because your career goes up and then it goes down, stop calling, skipping over the man, and just checking on the woman. Shout out to Tyrese, man, for keeping this shit all the way to fucking real, y'all. And um, I wanted to kind of add to that. Like, 
this is one of the reasons why I actually really, really, really created this podcast, man. And it's to, you know, I, you know, I y'all see how I just flipped the script that quick. Um, but in actuality, yeah, we have fun and we have games and we talk on on a podcast about like little shit like that. But like to actually hear this, it was for me, it uh was a I guess a feather in my hat. You know what I'm saying? Because oftentimes or not, this is the reason why this podcast was created. You know what I'm saying? When a man ain't supposed to cry, and especially a black man ain't supposed to cry. And to actually hear that from somebody who I, I wouldn't say I necessarily look up to, but I can get basically I kind of, you know, I guess look eye to eye to, you know what I'm saying? But the reason why this podcast started was in the black community, first and foremost, it is often looked down upon to say that you may be suffering from a mental breakdown, regardless of what you're going through, because as a man and a black man, you're not supposed to cry. You're not supposed to show emotion. You're just supposed to be strong and take this shit on the chin and keep it moving. And if we do cry or whatever, you say, hey, man, that's a white people thing or you being soft, man. And I wanted to, you know, say, let y'all know that the reason why I started Twin Intuition Presents Clear the Air or Clear the Air is to get black men talking again. Because we all are going through something, you know what I'm saying, whether it's big, small, great or tall, man, that uh, nobody sees on the outward of us because we hold it all in. But in actuality, once you can make a conversation or have a conversation with somebody, it, it, it not only um, releases whatever it is within you, but it's healthy. And it took me to, I guess, get off of of that wagon to say, you know, not only being a black man, but being a public servant as a firefighter, an EMT, to actually ask for help. And I necessarily didn't necessarily ask for help. I asked for it for a certain, like to a certain degree, but I didn't ask for it all the way. I had to have a team. Well, luckily for myself, I had my wife. Uh, Nicole on the boards to kind of really, you know what I'm saying, vouch for me as well and get me the necessary help I need when whatever I was going through at that point in time, man. And uh, just to see that, I saw myself. And this happened earlier this week. And I, when I saw myself and I was just like, yo, it take, you know, extreme amount of courage to be a, you know, to go out there. Regardless of this man, whatever his history is, whether he's an actor or not or whatever the hell's going on in his life, we all human beings, we all go through shit. But then when you realize on the other side of it, it's like, hey, if I don't talk about this, this can actually consume me. And then when you get to be a guy of my age or his age, and you're just like, hey, it, it's only, you know what I'm saying, one shot at this thing called life. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we get to live every day we wake up, but you only die once, right? And when you realize that, you put a lot of shit in perspective, yo. So the why of uh, Clear the Air is to, you know, not only, you know, bring the black community together, but to bring individual families together to be able to put it all out there in the front and to be able to have a discourse where you talk, Right. And we all got, you know, mouths to speak, but we also were granted uh, lucky enough to have two ears to hear. You know what I'm saying? And to have this conversation, sometimes people in your circle, they got to shut the fuck up and just listen. You know what I'm saying? To what's, you know, what's going on and, and, and whatever somebody else got going on. And not necessarily ask how you doing for the sake of just asking, but to ask and just to listen. Because it's more healthier for them to just to get it off their chest versus to hold it in because they don't want to be scrutinized or be joked on or laughed at because of whatever the hell they may be going through. So, like I said, the why is to bridge the gap between families, friends, because we feel like life gets in the way and it also clouds the judgment of others. Um, but most importantly, uh, clear the air is to give inspiration and hope to the young and the old um, and just make it a conversation and just being able to self-assess. So, yeah, that's just my piece on that. I'd like to shout out Tyrese as well. Nicole on the boards, you want to add anything to that? I, I, this is probably your first time hearing this. But, you know, I stay, I stay, you know what I'm saying, trying to take information and, you know what I'm saying, use it and then, you know, keep it moving. But Yeah, again, you know, I don't, I don't do the celebrity shit like that. Yeah, I got you, I'm, I got you. I'm, I'm not your typical female. I don't do that shit. Yeah, but... I don't it, know who no fucking body is. I had an individual at work that try to say some false allegations said told the internal investigation people that I told him he was sexy and looked like future and I'm like who the fuck is future I don't know what the fuck future looked like I literally had to google what the fuck future looked like to see what the fuck this person was talking about yeah and uh, and, <laughs> and she ain't lying damn I dropped my water if she ain't lying she'd be completely oblivious to certain shit I be saying I'm like oh that's so and so and she be like 
Who the fuck oh, is that? who the fuck is that? And I don't know. I guess it's just from me. I don't, I, the way my my brain works, like I can tell you all kinds of celebrities. I can tell you their names from just looking at their faces. And I don't know if it came from back in the day when I was a kid, right? And as a hobby, what we would do is we won't never privilege enough because we only own one of these motherfuckers, a VHS player. We would go to Blockbuster or Movie Time on Fridays and rent movies. And when my parents are trying to find the latest movie, what I would do is walk around this motherfucking blockbuster or movie time and look at the back of all like look at the covers and the backs of all movies and that's how i got in tune with like oh this person playing oh damn he got another movie and i would just read the motherfuckers like books the covers and the, the fronts and the uh backs of movies so shout out to me for having some kind of weird ass superpower like that where i can just remember names and faces to the point now in my walk in life like I know people by their face and at least by the, their last name. You know what I'm saying? Coming and going, especially in, in my jobs and things of that nature and just in the community. It's just like, damn, I, I know you from somewhere. If, if I think long enough, I can probably remember your name. And I don't know what it is. Hopefully, if I retire, when I retire, or if I get to have opportunity, um, I would like to be a you know FBI profile or somebody that can look up people and just use my brain. And like I feel like that's a, that's a, that's a talent not everybody got. So shout out to me. Um, let's see. But what about the Tyrese thing? Like, I've never like, especially being that we have experienced like having a miscarriage. Like, right? I've never like not once did anybody ever check on you. Right? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and for me, I like I said, I don't necessarily you know wear my heart on my sleeve when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, I think about it, you know, in times and essence, and and then like. Looking at the grand scheme of things, like we just finished up uh, our second um, recording or episode with the kids and kid tuition. And like, I might bitch and complain a lot, you know what I'm saying, as far as the responsibility of being a uh, parent who actually gives a fuck. And when I say a parent who actually gives a fuck, I'm actually, I'm stop, I'm listening, I'm looking at the little shit. I'm picking up all the little toys. It used to be, now it ain't toys. It's just a bunch of socks and empty <laughs> water bottles and shit in the crib. And, like, I'm having these little conversations with the kids. And, like, even though they know, they're like, yeah, dad don't like cleaning up this shit. But in a way, he kind of enjoy it because not only does, you know, he talk to us throughout the day, but then he's telling us, hey, he's showing us responsibilities and things of that nature. And I can only imagine how it would be if I had, you know, the other one that we uh, unfortunately didn't, wasn't able to make it, uh, be here as well. Um, probably would have been the only motherfucker <laughs> looking at it. From, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. But no, it, it no, actually, it, it, it does. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different type of responsibility being a parent, and especially being a, 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 a present uh, black man um, as a parent as well. So, yeah, yeah we, we got we, a very funny story about that whole situation, too. What you got? You can add. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, after. I had the miscarriage and, you know, basically I went to the doctor because I started bleeding and, you know, they checked me or whatever. And it's like, oh, you're having a miscarriage. So they gave me an option. Either I can let the miscarriage just happen naturally, which it can happen any day. It could be up to a week or whatever, or you can have a procedure done to take everything that needs to come out, out all at once. So I chose to go that route. So then after the procedure, I had to go for a checkup at the doctor. And, you know, all every time I have gotten pregnant, we always planned it. So we were trying to conceive. And the doctor comes in and checking on us. How y'all doing? Blah, blah, blah. And he was basically telling us that... <laughs> We got to make, we got to, how often that we need to have sex so that we can catch my ovulation cycle or whatever. And you laughing now because you know what I'm about to say. <laughs> and the doctor goes, so, you know, you got to try to be spontaneous. And then he finishes up whatever, and then he leaves the room. And as soon as he leaves the room, This nigga goes, you want to do it now? 
But then I put my foot in my mouth, y'all, because like every day I was like, yo, I had, I had hit it with Uncle Phil from the original Fresh Prince. I was like, Vivian, I'm not a fucking machine. Leave me alone. <laughs> God damn. But yeah, so yeah, that, that did happen. Um, anything else you would like to add in that subject matter? I mean, because it, it, it it, it's definitely, uh, you know, a conversation that needs to be had, you know what I'm saying? And I don't really try to get too, too personal in here. But in the same token, it's just like, hey, we are real life people dealing with real life shit. Um, the things that I probably encountered in life, probably somebody else in there encountered or maybe currently going through it, man, and it probably can help them out in, in, in all retrospect as well. So um, I'll try to give you a little, you know, small little tidbits and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like um, I'm writing a story of my life, right? And uh, no greater book than a book that I'm telling you, writing you right now. And like I said, I just want to shout y'all out for real for, you know, actually just still rocking with us and, you know, being able to, you know, we give y'all these shared experiences as well. And um, like I said, we growing. The fan base is growing. Uh, but not only that, you know, we have a great support group and system as well. That's uh, the ones that know who they are, know who they are, man. So I'd like to shout y'all out. Thank y'all. Um, but moving on. Um, I will be remiss, you know. Like I said, it's the end of uh, August coming up in September, so football season is almost here. And I wanted to ask you, Nicole and the boys, what's your expectations for the 2024-2025 NFL season? Um, shit. You got a Super Bowl pick? I mean, not really. Not really? I got Super Bowl hopes. Okay. But... Like, I don't follow enough of other teams to know what's going on with other teams. But, you know, my hopes every year is that we go all the way. For sure. Hell yeah. And who are we? Go Pack Go. Green Bay Packers. All Let's day. Let's go. Cheese Shout cheese out. Cheesehead. Packers, Packers, whatever the fuck you want to call us. Whatever the fuck you want to call us, man. And them cheese curds are like that. Not the ones okay. you get at Applebee's, the ones from Wisconsin. Them bitches is like that. I'm at glad the, I live at the restaurant there. right outside the stadium. Outside the stadium, I think we probably was the only niggas in there, and we got treated like royalty in that motherfucker. They kept like, asking where we were from. When I say <laughs> it was a lady that was in the restaurant, that you know we Green Bay from head to toe. I mean everything, pants, Green Bay shoes. Well, you had shoes, I was Green Bay. Uh-huh. I think I had my Green Bay boots on, so mm. I think we was both Green Bay head to toe. Jackets on Green Bay, shirts on Green Bay, everything Green Bay, right? And it was and layers because it was cold as fuck out there. Fucking, layers. It's a different type of cold out there. I'm that shit you. burn is so cold out there. Go ahead. But, you know, we're sitting there and we're at the table and she was like, you know, they're so friendly. Expect Like, we were shocked because, you know, we're black. We didn't think these older white people was going to talk to us, right? <laughs> so she just starts talking to us and, um, y'all here for the game? It's like, yeah, we're here for the game. It's our first time we've never been. She was like, oh, that's amazing. And... She was like, I used to work at the Packers Pro Shop for 30 years. Well, And she had a necklace that she took off and gave me because I was telling her that how one day I would like to bring my daughter out here. So she had this little foot, green football and that she gave me to give to my daughter. Mm-hmm. And then, like, what was even the coolest part about the whole thing was, like, we were sitting there at the table, and she just so happened to ask us, well, where are y'all sitting in the stadium? So we was like, oh, I'm not sure, right? So we go to pull it up, and, well, Carrie goes to pull it up, and he's looking at it, and he's like, 107. 107, row one. He's like, she shows me, I said, be in the first row. Mm-hmm. Be in the Lambo Leap section. Yeah. We was like. <laughs> Hell yeah Yep So yeah that was awesome And the funny thing about that story I don't think I told y'all On clear the air yet But the way that happened yo So and I see how I try to get A little bit more I try to you know, Bridge uh, This worldly stuff here And then The spiritual stuff as well But like the words say It's life and death In the tongue right And I was speaking With a young lady Earlier today At, at work And she was I was telling her Like if you speak it, it It'll come to life Right Hence, my daughter and kid tuition when I said, hey, don't go break that damn shell today. She broke the motherfucker, right? I spoke it in the existence and it happened. I remember telling my wife a couple of years prior to us going to Lambeau, I said, hey, Nicole, if I want to go to a football game, 
I don't want to go see the Commanders play Green Bay. I want to be at Lambeau Field. Game come on at 8 o'clock. I want it to be the only game on TV, and I want snow to fall. And what happened? Snow fell. Snow fell. It's the only game on TV. only thing I didn't ask for was a fucking victory, yo. But I still was like, yo, I spoke it. I believed it. And that's the amount of faith I want y'all to have in anything and everything that you do in this world, man. Just speak it once and let the rest of it take care of itself, man. So that's just kind of a little smidget of a motivational minute wrapped into my life. Um, but I wanted to add to this as well. Um, in Green Bay, they have uh, with the training camp going on right now, right? And they got joint practices. And for those of y'all who follow the Green Bay Packers or who just follow NFL, fun fact. The Green Bay Packers is the only uh, franchise where all the little kids in the neighborhood bring their bicycles to the stadium, right? And the Packers players, they'll get on the bikes and ride them motherfuckers to practice, you know, to and from the uh, practice field to the training facility, right? The kids run beside them on the bike and shit, right? This week, Nicole, mm -hmm. um, the Packers had a joint practice with the, uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Shout out to the Ravens. Mm -hmm. um, and funny, 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 funny. Um, Lamar Jackson, the quarterback of the uh, Baltimore Ravens, mm -hmm. he happened to get on one of the bicycles and was riding uh, back from practice. And you can tell he ain't rode a bike in a long, long, long time. <laughs> he almost ate shit on one of them kids' bikes. And like when he when he went to go get like dap people up uh, as he was uh, riding Ooh. by, he ended up doing one of these jumps like that, right? He caught himself and started walking with that jump. And then I can only imagine all the Ravens fans and owners and training staff holding their breath like, yo, we just gave this nigga a whole lot of fucking money. And if he get a season ending injury riding a goddamn bike at Green Bay, we're going to be fucked for the rest of the fucking year. So it was funny as the hell to see it. Um, if y'all haven't seen the video, go see it. I, I may or may not have a little video playing beside me of Lamar Jackson almost eating shit at Lambo, but it definitely was funny as hell. Um, Moving right along, um, also the ending of uh, the summer also means the end of the training camp. And for those of y'all who follow the show, uh, HBO uh, Hard Knocks um, this year, uh, as my daughter Zendaya would say, the toilet seats, the Chicago Bears is the marquee team that's on Hard Knocks, right? And if, for those of y'all who know, Hard Knocks is on HBO, so you get to do a lot of stuff on HBO that you can't do on regular TV. Well, kind of. Hard to say that now because you'd be surprised what you see on regular TV now. But NFL Hard Knocks is, you know, you used to hearing people, you know what I'm saying, say what's on their mind on Hard Knocks and NFL and cussing and, you know, talking shit. But this came out as news for the Hard Knocks. There is a zero cursing policy in this year's Hard Knocks because the Bears owners, the McCaskey family, uh, does not use profanity and will not want to hear their players cursing on TV. So I was like, wow. I mean, not that we really give a fuck, but it's like, who cares? And uh, if I wanted to laugh, I saw this on, on threads, um, Instagrams, uh, well, Twitter. Read the comment section. It's funny as hell. To the um, Bears owners. How the fuck do you own a football team if you don't want to hear fucking cussing? Facts. Grow the fuck up. That's kind of like when I play football at Liberty. But that's a different story for a different day. Own a flag football team. Yeah, they shouldn't be cussing in that. They said they ain't want nobody cussing. I haven't seen Hard Knocks. No, no that I want to watch the Bears. Um, the toilet seats. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> um, I had to stop the bleeding. So I think I got rid of HBO Max too. So shout out to me. <laughs> Paramount Plus. You on the chopping block. Um, with that being said, um, moving right along, y'all, for those of y'all who don't know, um, just recently, the, uh, the Democratic National Convention, in, convention um, had took place, and the Democrats, you know, the, the, the Republican convention already happened about a couple weeks prior, but the Democrats are pulling out all kinds of stops. Like they, they, they brought back the Obamas for the uh, cosign. They even had somebody remix Michelle Obama talking about Donald Trump. And they had meshed that junk great with uh, Kendrick Lamar's The Grams. If you haven't seen it, you got to see it. It's definitely whoever did it was. It was great. Um, but they even brought uh, NBA uh, champion 
um, coaching and player uh, and now um, national uh, champion, I mean, United States champion or Olympic champion coach, Steve Kerr to the Democratic Natural Convention. And he did the goddamn Steph Curry talking about Donald Trump. He said, and I quote, after the results are tallied on election night, we, the Democrats, can tell Donald Trump to go night night. He did the Steve Curry just like that, yo. So shout out to, I mean, he did the uh, Steph Curry just like this to, you know, tell him go night night because it's, it's over. So it, it's funny. For me, it, it's, all, it's all theater to me, to be honest, y'all. Um, but yeah, if you, those who don't know, um, we, we're coming up on it, uh, the end of it, which is uh, Monday, October 7th. 2024, it is the last day to register to vote for the 2024 presidential election. So if you have not already, go ahead and go register to vote, man, and make your vote count if that's the type of thing that you're into. Or I don't want y'all to, you know, later on in life or later on after the election's over, have complaints and gripes and not use your right. Okay, so go vote. Um, moving right along, uh, let's see. Well, where have where have we been, man? Let's see. Where have we been? Shout out to the ladies of a WNBA. Oh, why, oh, go oh, ahead, go ahead. I about to say, why are you trying to gather your thoughts? Uh huh. So, just a, you know, I guess kind of public service announcement in a way. Okay. But before you hit the road, say a prayer over you and your family. To, for God to protect you. True that. Through your travels because. This could be the cold hot take slash cold world. Go ahead. When we was on on our way to our vacation, right? I'm I'm, I'm the driver in the family. He's the cooker. I'm the driver. <laughs> but I'm also the co-captain. Call me Captain Lieutenant. Whatever you want to call. I'm letting you know. So, hey, left, right, like, there. we drove to Green Bay. I drove... Took us 16 hours. I drove 13. There and back. She did. I let him drive three hours. That was it. I told him I had to rest. He, he did offer several times. I kept him. No, I'm good. Kept driving. But on our way to the beach, you know, driving 460. You know, you got two lanes going. Is it east and west? Mm -mm. It's north and south? No, east and west. My bad, my yeah. bad, my bad. East All right, west. so you got two lanes going east, two lanes going west, right? So we going towards the beach. That's what, west? Yep. So we in the westbound lanes, and I'm in the lane that's closest to, to the oncoming fucking traffic. The oncoming traffic. And in my rear view, I see this charger. Charger. I was about to say Mustang. All on all of my ass, right? So I'm like, let me get the fuck over so this motherfucker can get off my ass. So I kindly get over. So then he all up on the ass of the vehicle that was in front of me. And then the vehicle that was in front of me got over. I got over, back over in the other lane, and proceeded to attempt to get past the vehicle that was in front of me because... The motherfucker just seemed like he just weren't fucking paying attention, so I didn't really want to be behind him. So I was trying to get in front of him. So as soon as the charger passed Pat by him, he hurries him, cuts me off, and gets over. So then I'm kind of, at the, after that, I was kind of stuck in the lane because the way the traffic was. And we, I'm riding, I have maybe like two car lengths between me and the white truck that was in front of us. And the white truck just all of a sudden out of nowhere just darts in the other lane, right? And as soon as they moved where I could see what was in front of them, it was a fucking truck, like a Toyota Tundra Tacoma, something like that. Dead Tundra. fucking stop in the middle of fucking 460. A brand new John too with the big ass tailgate. So, <laughs> like, and I'm going 65, 70. Coming up on a vehicle, dead fucking stop. Oh, yeah. I slammed, when I say I had the brake pedal t touching the fucking floor, I could hear the wheels squealing on the fucking road. I got so close to the fucking truck, 
And I was like, this motherfucker is not going to stop in time. So I had no choice but to turn my steering wheel. And luckily, by the grace of God, the person that was in, that was like kind of like in my blind side. In the inside lane, yeah. In the inside lane. When I started to get over, they got over kind of on the shoulder too. So like I was skated right right past the bumper of the damn truck without and nobody connected, nobody hit. No, nothing. Er, nothing. In the wild part Everybody about it. Everybody was safe. But the fucked up part about it, right? Talk about it. After the fucking truck that was stopped in the middle of the fucking road, after that but bitch almost got hit by me and I had to skate past his ass. He decided to keep going straight. Yeah, and I don't even think it was a fucking left hand turn anyway, right there. So I don't know what that was, but what we're saying is just stay prayed up, man. Be conscious. Luckily, you know, Carrie <laughs> said, Thank God I prayed before we left. I said, Shit, I did too. Thank God. Ain't God it. had us in his hands. Because our vacation would have fucking ended it right there. It the whole the whole vacation. We a whole life vacation would end it right there, y'all. So please, please, please stay prayed up. But on a lighter note, uh, what y'all watching? What's streaming, Nicole? What you watching right now? Uh, Bel Air. Yep, we watching Bel Air. So shout out to the the new drama field of uh, Bel Air on Peacock. It's a pretty good show because I was thinking for myself. After the Olympics is over, what the fuck am I watching on Peacock? Like if, if I ain't got nothing to watch, I'm going to stop the bleeding. But uh, Bel Air came back on, and we're not binging it. Try to watch at least one episode, maybe a day or two in between or whatever. But while we're on vacation, we did watch the first three episodes before we left. And I think we're on episode four now. Well, um, we watched like one or two. One or two? Okay, yeah. But Bel Air's back on. It's a pretty good show um, for those of y'all who are into, you know, dramas and uh not only that, just to see those who grew up in our era who watched the original, The Fresh Prince of the Bel Air, into the watch the Bel Air. And as I was watching it last night with you, Nicole, I was like, I remember when uh, the young guy that was an independent filmmaker, he ended up creating this show. I don't know if he got the prop for this show now, but he created this same exact show out of his own mind. It was like, hey, I'm, 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 I want to redo. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but I wanted it to be more drama filled, yo. And the show that's out that we're watching now on Peacock is the same exact show that he created. So I want to shout out to that young man. I wish I knew his name off the top of my head. I think he started like a like a little Kickstarter or from somehow some way the show took flight, man. And shout out, shout out and also shout out to Will Smith who actually, you know, co-signing with it as well. And over the uh our vacation break, him and uh, Coco Jones, the girl who plays Hillary, who's also a recording artist. She and Will Smith uh, did a rendition of Will Smith's Summertime, and it was dope as hell to see him do that on the set of, I think, of uh, Bel Air. So that was dope. That's what, that's what we watching. Um, other than that, we watched the National Geographic on uh, Disney Plus and fall asleep on that shit. Unless it's some real dope shit, like watching those whales um, do <laughs> their shit. The sperm whales, uh, no diddy, pause. Um, do their thing on there Because we don't see shit like that When we go to the beach But we did see some fucking dolphins, yo yeah, On more yeah. than one occasion Out there at the beach That was awesome to see um, And, and my mean, white side tried to come out Yeah, thank God the Because I, I was in the water I was in the ocean Swimming around and shit, right? And literally like five minutes after I got out Right where I, the fuck I was at in the ocean The fucking dolphins I said, you think I can make it out there too? It's like swimming no, the they dogs. gone. They gone. But we, I mean, we got all kinds of binoculars and shit looking at them. Go like we, we we be out there. Like we be we be out there watching y'all. Um, let's see what else do we have to offer to our, our dedicated fan base. Oh. Mm -hmm. Race check, Nicole. I'm sorry. Okay, it's another race check. Um, it's hip hop related. Lord. Are you ready for it? Not really. All right. So, <laughs> with that being said, um, for those of y'all at the the listening audience and the viewing audience, if you know the answer to these race checks, whether in your car, whether you at work, whether you on the shitter, just blurt it out, okay? Because I know y'all know, and I like to hear it and, and and also leave a comment as well so with that being said this week's race check is is hip-hop related okay 
And according to the locks, what is the key to life? You got 10 seconds. I have no idea. All right, so according to the locks, this is a hip hop related. Uh, you know what was all was coming to my head, but I what? know it's not right. What's that? Cash rule everything around me. Oh, <laughs> the dollar, the dollar bill, you know? damn! I'm sorry. So that was wrong, but that, that, that was a good. I knew it was wrong. That's why I didn't say it. That's dope, though. I'm, I'm so so you almost there, but uh, <laughs> according to the locks, ladies and gentlemen, for those of y'all who blurted it out in at work in your car on the toilet, um, it's uh, the key to life is money. Power and respect. So shout out to the locks, man. Um and uh the Queen B, Lil' Kim, yo. See. And, you know how and, I am. What? Unless you give me a snippet of a song uh -huh. that you know I know. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna know. I ain't really know who the locks was. Oh, the jog you remember? Oh, <laughs> the lock Jada Kiss, Styles P and Sheik Looch. I mean, if you tell me the locks, like I'm like you you like I said, I ain't know who the fuck Future was. And Future oh, yeah, had been right, out for right. years. Yeah, so, so you do. <laughs> you, you, you all right. But while you got your hands out there, I want you to go ahead and reach in when your left pocket or your right pocket is a black car. You can go ahead and take that out because it is mine. Race check. Um, but no, and uh, it's all funny games, y'all. I appreciate all y'all that were um, that were I highly engaged in it as well. I guess I have to find a mix-related uh, question pretty soon, but I, we'll, we'll, we'll try to figure that out uh, one way or the other. Uh, but for those of y'all who who are in a dedicated fan base, I do have a new, new, a new, where my boy at? A new, new, a new call to action. And um, this has been on my heart for a while since I uh, reached out to a couple of, uh, well, one gentleman in particular, that uh, runs the organic culture brand. And what I want to do is uh, to all calling all people that has their own businesses to uh, our new clear the air business spotlight. And what we're looking for, we're looking for a ad spot on the show here at a, uh, 2020 percent clear the air and i'm calling all business owners all entrepreneurs we want to be able to you know kind of break bread with y'all guys in the essence we want to be able to interview you guys you know as far as how your business uh, model is how it goes how it operates and um we have a have an ad on our show because we are growing and um we want to be able to like i said we want to grow with others as well that's actually you know putting one foot in front of the other and actually trying to continue to grow their brand and continue to um, clear the air for themselves as well. So to all business owners, we, we, we got a, we got a spot for you. <laughs> want to have you sit down on this couch. We want to talk to you about your business. We want to talk about your business, man. Um, we want to be able to, you know what I'm saying? Not only, you know, cover you, but in the same token, you know what I'm saying? Some real shit. What you got? When it comes to like a business owner or something, we really need to try to see if we can go to them so that we can showcase their business. Because having them come here, sit and talk about their business is not showing their business. Oh, wow. If so come, if we can set up and I mean, you don't have to necessarily set up quite as big as this. But if you can come with a camera or two, set up a little some some and then you can walk with them around the store or whatever, show what they have to offer and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shout out to Nicole and the boys. Um, yeah, so call to action to all business owners, business spotlight, clear the air. We're gonna pull up on y'all. Uh, we're gonna definitely pull up. Where is that? Pull up on me. We're gonna pull up on y'all, man, and uh, we're gonna try to you know showcase your business. We're gonna pull interview on you. On, we're gonna interview you on the spot, man. So for like I said, the call to action is just send me a DM, send us a DM um, at Clear the Air, Twin Tuition, um, Instagram, Twitter. Facebook, all that, man. Send us a message, man. We message back, and it's just like that. <laughs> Business Spotlight. Creating opportunities. Clear the air, creating opportunities. But I would be remiss if I don't segue to this, y'all. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the Clear the Air bucket hat is now up. Um, up for retail right now. Uh, I don't have... Uh, actual website that i'm uh putting this on uh, we got to get with our partners and go from there but the clear that bucket hat is now going for 34.99 msrp and as you can see it's just our you know original um clear the air embroidered bucket hat 
It's a ledge crown bucket hat. Kind of like the one I got on here, but this is the custom bucket hat. This is for our raffle um, participants, which, again, I, I reiterate, is a $10 raffle for, I would like to say, a $30, $40 hat. And you can probably get it. It can be yours for $10. Um, but with that being said, right now, on display, I don't know if Nicole and the boys can get this hat real good, but this is clear to air bucket hat. It's black and it's embroidered with our original logo and assets on it. I can't really see it. Thirty-four ninety-nine. Clear the air, y'all, and it's just like that. Man. It's Get the, your hands on it. Three M in it. Uh huh. It's the three M in it. It's got three M in it. Oh wow. Like you can't really see the C at all. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. I got you. All right, yep. So. And go on $34.99. Hit me up if y'all want to get one while the merch is so hot. Because soon, yesterday's price will not be today's price. I'm letting y'all know that off the rip, man. But I'd like to thank all the loyal supporters for real for definitely rocking with us, y'all. Um, but yeah, that, I wanted to kind of, you know, just a little subtle plug as well. Like I said, we are growing, we are expanding as well. And uh, pretty soon, this, hey, these bucket hats may be in a brick and mortar near you. You know what I'm saying? Maybe just a select few of those and. Maybe somebody's business um, that we made business spotlight up on our show, man. So it's just like that. Um, but I know. See, I try to cater to all the audiences, all the demographic that listen to this show on the way to work or at work or on the way home on the toilet or watching on YouTube. But this is Nerd Talk, uh, Nicole on the boards. And uh, this is for all my uh, my video game heads out here. Uh, <clears throat> just recently this week, um, Gamescom, for y'all who don't know, it's kind of, I guess you can say, for those who do know, it's, it's the new E3. Gamescom is, uh, always presented in Cologne, Germany, and this is where they showcase all the new and upcoming video games, um, kind of like their E3, and, um, Xbox took the stage, and there's a lot of new games that's coming up, a lot of upcoming games, and, uh, for me, I was kind of, kind of, I felt kind of good, you know, from Xbox stance, even though game price did have a price hike. They went from, I think, $14.99 to $20 a month now for Game Pass. But uh, they got the Indiana Jones coming. They got this new uh, Star Wars game coming and a whole bunch of other games. And I don't I don't want to try to name them all, but uh, I feel like you're finally getting your money's worth out of uh, the Xbox uh, ecosystem itself. Um I think for me, the biggest game I'm looking forward to playing uh, soon. Well, I can't really say, man, it's probably Call of Duty. I'm going to be honest with y'all. That's probably the next game I play on the Xbox. I'm um, still looking for my damn uh, Splinter Cell to get released. And I don't think they're going to release no time soon. It, it's, it's a different type of type of vibe playing Splinter Cell, just sneaking around, knocking people out or shooting them in the head and stuff like that. It's a Tom Clancy like game. Um, also, um, without without mentioning that, uh, Xbox. You got. You also got to mention PlayStation when you mention Xbox. You, you can't. You cannot mention one without the other. Um, but shout out, shout out, shout out, <laughs> shout out to the PlayStation Portal. Shout out to Sony for actually making the PlayStation Portal portable. Like I mentioned before on the last uh, podcast. But I would be remiss, Nicole and the boys, if I don't shout out your sister, uh, Angie B, <laughs> Big Ange. Um, the power fucking went out at the crib, right? And we called her ass. Was like, yo, we brought these PlayStation ports all the way from VA to this damn uh vacation. The power went out. I need you to go to the house, unlock the door, and turn on both our PS5 so we can play these goddamn portals. She did that for us. <laughs> Shout out to Big Ange, um, for letting me keep it on, keep it on playing the video game. Even though I didn't play much of the game. While I was on vacation But it was still good to have it You know what I'm saying For maybe 10-15 minutes Turn it off 10-15 minutes Turn it off man So Shout out to PlayStation I'm still Nintendo I'm still waiting On a new Switch successor um, But Back to the uh, Portal I I jumped back into Hogwarts Legacy uh, I don't know if it's just The season's changing or what And it's starting to You know Get to be fall time It's, it's Harry Potter season That's right It's gotta be Because that's every time I, I I fall in love with uh, the Hogwarts shit. Is like That's why I don't understand. Why the hell do they have the Harry Potter bar, bar crawl in Richmond on August 6th or whatever the weekend near August 6th? Because people can still be outside and not be Harry cold Harry Potter shit. bar crawl need to be like September, October, November, some shit like that. Yeah, preferably like September, I think. So you, 
I can walk around in my full Harry Potter school uniform. Oh wow! <laughs> you wear that tonight. <laughs> with my yeah, that man. With my cloak and all. Yeah, she got a whole so so head like, to toe. Yeah, and and, 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 all. and this is her first real, real, real costume that she has, right? So she she really want to pull a costume out. For me, for those of y'all who don't know me, y'all gonna see real soon come October how I do Halloween, and it's crazy. For those of y'all who do know, let them know in the comments. But uh, I do Halloween to a whole different degree. I don't know how it happened. I think it became just me being freely being myself, and when I became myself, people started to notice me more than me trying to be somebody else, man. But Halloween is definitely a thing that I love doing. Um, the people look forward to. It, which is weird because like one year I wasn't going to do it, which was last year, and it still was pretty good. And I feel like I ain't have enough time to prepare. But uh, I do or create a whole lot of characters that y'all see on movies and TV. And uh, I don't know. I don't know who's my favorite. If if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be Blank Man. I don't know. because I think, I think, I think out of all of them, you enjoy doing Blank Man the most. Yeah, I think I enjoy doing Blank Man because people, Cause they I laugh like at me. and late. It, the most two black, black man. Yeah, probably. Say, I am a geek. Shout out to all the geeks. Speaking of that, shout out to the coolest geek, which happened to be also the best rapper in Charlotte, which is Eco Ecclesia. So I'm going to say that, hey, we are taking over the world, man. And it's cool because we segue that from nerd talk, man. Shout out to me. Shout out. It's, it's all coming together, Nicole. Um, but we have now been partying for two hours and 14 minutes. I want to try to keep it this way. That way I can kind of uh, more or less. Uh, you know, save me time on the back end, editing the things on nature until I hire somebody. If you know any editors, let me know because uh, I don't mind coaching them. I mean, unfortunately, I'm going to kind of have to direct them as well because I, I like how my shit look, sound, and feel as well. But um, moving right along, before we do the motivational minute, uh, Nicole on the boards, I wanted to go to what I like to call the more you know segment, okay? And um, it's it's really black related, to be honest, because, you know, this is, you know, not necessarily a black podcast, it's an educational podcast as well. But we all we do cater to the demographic of the African, African-American community as well and the like um, and the allies as well. But we all are one human race. But it came to my attention. I was talking to this gentleman today and um, for, for more or less, um, I'm going to add it to the motivational minute. So motivational minute. And the motivation a minute this uh, week, y'all, is iron sharpens iron. And it's in the Bible, right? And I wanted to let y'all know that the reason why I said it is because a lot of people in, in our walk in life, in our age group, in our demographic, they do not like being criticized or being told, hey, man, you should do it this way. Or being corrected, Fair right? True. Because they feel like, yeah, we are equals. But in the same token, a lot of us have seen and done things that others have not yet to experience. Mm-hmm. And in order, you know, to alleviate the heartache, the hardships or the stress that comes with that situation or point in life and growth, we kind of correct them like, hey, I wouldn't do it that way. Or for Nicole on the board, she's going to be point blank and blunt with you and be honest like, hey, don't it's do that stupid straight shit. Straight to the point. Straight to the point, right? But like that's back like, to, hmm, go ahead. To not to interrupt, but that's like, when I went and grabbed the sodas before we started, seeing these crazy ass looking fanas, right? They were it was called haunted apple. Hmm. And I was like, hmm, kids might like to try that, right? Uh-huh. Grab the drinks for me and you. Grab two two of those for the kids, right? Mm-hmm. Bought it to the register. Put her. She said, the lady goes, I wouldn't get that if I was you. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. But she was like, I wouldn't get that if I was you. I was like, looked at her like, why? What's wrong with it? She was like, she said, I got one. And she went over to the side of the room. I'm thinking, what the fuck is she about to give me? A taste test or some shit? Oh, <laughs> like, damn. What the fuck is she about to do, right? A gas station. So uh-huh. she goes to the um, where I guess the one that she bought and unscrews it and says, just smell it. So mm. I said, she said, it tastes just like it smells. Mm. I said, oh, I said, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put these back. Wow, what the fuck? What does it smell like? Licorice or something? Like a candle. Mm. Wow. Well, damn. Okay. Well, it's it, supposed to be like some Beetlejuice shit. 
Oh, uh, okay, okay. Now it's making sense. Okay, yeah, some horrible shit. That, yeah, for the, for the just something to get cancer. That's all it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, back to like the and, and shout out to her for actually you know being able to not only reciprocate that information, but for the lady to be able to say, hey, I would do that for you. And that's the same thing with, with this segment, uh, Motivation Minute. Uh, like I said, iron sharp is iron. But it's I came to the conclusion, because I always thought it, well, every time I heard that uh, that parable in, in the Bible or heard it, somebody, you know, phrase it that way, I was like, what the fuck they mean, iron sharp and iron, right? And I started to do some studying, homework I mean, on it, right? Historically, I guess you could say, like, don't they use iron to make blades and shit? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an iron blade, and they hitting it with, they heat it up and they hit it with iron to sharpen it. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and that's exactly what I was getting at. Um, in order to be sharpened, the other has to be sharper than the one that needs to be sharpened. And what I'm saying is, in life, it may be somebody out here that's iron. And then my, my motherfucker, motherfucker might be iron as well. Mm-hmm. But other person might be sharper than the one that's beside them. Mm-hmm. And what it is, it's going to take some kind of friction to be able to sharpen the person beside them, to get them as sharp as they are. And where friction comes, controversy. Conflict. Where friction comes, disagreement, mm-hmm. conflict, hurt feelings, and shit like that. And it's like, you don't understand that right now, you are, are being tested. You are growing. And it comes with that, right? And uh, I wanted to kind of, you know, to break it down even even better to those of y'all that's watching, listening, learning. And no, I'm not a philosopher by any way, means, but I feel like this does make sense. You need somebody sharper than you to make you as sharp as them. And then you can find somebody that's dull and you can sharpen them and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. But for those of y'all who don't like to be called out, who don't like to be, uh, you know, criticized or ridiculed on the things that they can change. Don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. It's like you need that friction in order to transition. OK, so you are not being called out. In actuality, you are being called up. You just got to know the difference of it. OK, because the moral of the story is the duller you are, the quicker your ass will rust. And when rust come, death. And you're no longer here, right? And I can sum this up by saying in the words of Kendrick Lamar on that Mr. Morale and Big Steppers album that I fell in love with when I was going through some shit in life. The song was called Purple Hearts. And uh, on the hook, he says, uh, shut the fuck up when love talking. So that's my motivation minute uh, about that. Um, so you can take it however you want to take it. And I just wanted to kind of just bridge the gap. Not only, you know, did I, you know, touch in, you know, saying what you know, biblical and moral standards and ethics, but I also bring some music in as well, because that's how we do on Clear the Air, y'all. But to the more you know segment before we get out of here. And uh this marries together with iron sharpens iron. And uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of this before, but I was talking to this gentleman about that same uh, same segment I just had in the, on the, uh, the motivational minute. And have y'all have a, have you ever heard of the William Lynch speech or the William Lynch syndrome? Mm-mm. All right. So y'all ready to put on y'all history caps? The black history you didn't know? All right. So William Lynch, his speech is also known as the Willie Lynch letter. Okay. And it's, an address purportedly delivered by William Lynch or Willie Lynch to an audience on the bank of the James River in Virginia in 1712 regarding the control of slaves within the colony, okay? The letter purports that to be a verbatim account of a short speech given by a slave owner in which he tells other slave masters that he has discovered the secret to controlling black slaves by setting them against one another. All right. Wow. And basically, I wanted to kind of let y'all know that this is what divides us right here. What have been dividing us for so long. Because we get this it's correction. Behavior. Right. Like it's they, a, right. They set us against each other back in the day and it just trickled down. That's why you have... 
you don't really see a lot in the news and stuff where you got white communities and they're fucking killing each other. Correct. But in every black community, correct, they're all killing each other. Correct. Correct. And it, and it's just that and it's that way of thinking. Oh, uh, this Nicole. Together so we are strong. Divided we fall. Exactly. And in order to conquer us, you got to divide us. How do you divide exactly, us? You put us exactly against each why other. The the boat thing happened the way it happened because we were together. Right. 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 And it's and, and I wanted to you know make this make that moment a teachable moment. Um, open your eyes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the, to the demographic. You know, to all of us, like our people, the slaves. They died because of lack of knowledge, right? And I come on this platform, yeah, I look cool with the shades, dope ass jacket, and you know, the clear the air hat and all other stuff, man. But this is a billboard, twin tuition, clear the air hat. Uh, but this is a billboard, y'all. This, this is how I invite you in. And when I invite you in, now I'm being able to give you some knowledge, drop you some jewels. I got a resume that's long as shit. Not a rap sheet, but a resume of things that I've done in this life, uh, professionally, uh, personally, and things of that nature that you can relate to. Because if I'm better off being able to walk the talk instead of talk the talk, because if I can walk the talk, you can watch it. And if you can watch it, you can learn from it, okay? Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is I'm giving, I'm dropping jewels as well, y'all. So take it however you want to take it. Um, do your own research as well. But uh, the William Lynch letter... From the slave owner, William Lynch. He created it back in 1712 here in Virginia in the James River. This is slave territory here where he made it so we can divide and conquer us. This is their history and they're trying to continue to use it against us, making us, keep us in impoverished communities, keeping our, 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 our girlfriends, our wives, our spouses on welfare, breaking up marriages and shit like that, putting us against each other, putting people on child support and shit like that. It's a reason why you divide them, you conquer them. It's a reason why it's a lot of young ladies out here that don't nothing, don't want anything for themselves because they know that the government going to give me a check at least once a month, whether it be food stamps. And I know that black man that's working, busting his ass that I no longer want to be with. I got kids with him now. Now I'm going to have his ass paying child support. It's the divide and conquer, man. And then that black man go to jail for not paying child support. So now the kids don't got a daddy at home or a dad that they can reach out and talk to because he's behind bars. And the whole time the woman is getting ripping the benefits but not knowing that they give your ass just a little enough to come right back. And that's just my piece on that, y'all. Uh, with my, that being said. My little, my little piece on that is. Y'all girls out here getting all this fucking um, checks from these baby daddies, child support checks. That shit ain't for you to go get your fucking hair and nails done. Nope. That's for your fucking child. If you want your fucking hair and nails done, go twerk some. Go to the fucking strip club, shake some ass, make some fucking money if you don't want to go get a real job. JD, go, go tricking on JD. Or just go do some hair. Find a, find a trade. Go do some hair. You know, be a nurse. You know, do something great. You know what I'm saying? Because we are, we are created to do great things. We all have gifts. I ain't necessarily saying assets. But we all have gifts and talents that we can use for a betterment of our community. I told a guy today, I said, hey, man, I cut hair. He said, oh, yeah, I thought I saw you in the shop. What shop you at? I said, my shop at my house, dog. And the haircuts be free. They used to be really free until I started getting taken advantage of. But the haircuts are free. Because then if I got you sitting in my chair, I can sit there and I can talk to you. And if I can talk to you, I know you can listen because you can't stop listening. And that way I can be able to speak to you and to be able to breathe life into you and things of that nature. So, and I ain't got no shop, but I'm working with these hands and these gifts that God has given me to give away. Hence, clear the air. Music spotlight. Hence, call to action to all the business owners, y'all. Got an opportunity for y'all. But... I'm going to go ahead and wrap this podcast up, y'all. Um, and I always lead a podcast like this. And it's to always pray to have eyes to see the best in people, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses faith in God. And most importantly, 
as twin intuition goes, man, you change your thoughts and you'll change your world, y'all. I go by the name of Hoggy, and uh, I'm here sur- surrounded with my wife, my my, my cohort, um, Miss Nicole on the boards. I'm trying to cue it up, but while I cue it up, um, I don't know. Maybe very very soon. So all y'all listening and watching and learning, just got an opinion like we all got, like assholes. We all got those too. Um, call to action, man. Some people technically got two. Some people technically got two. If they got a stoma. <laughs> wow, here she go with the wow shit. I mean, if you got your att- intestines attached to your doubt. Sewn to your outside of your stomach and you shit out of it. They got Doesn't two it technically make it a asshole? That is true. Wow. Um, <laughs> I but guess a stomach hole. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm glad you did that because I was able to cue my shit up though. <laughs> As you did that, I was able to cue my shit up without having the camera. I hope you had the camera. It on. was on you. <laughs> oh damn, shit, the camera. So y'all saw me cue my shit up. But like I said, in all seriousness, I've been thinking, and uh, like I said, I, I don't, I don't, really, I don't, I'm not really big on olive branches and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Um, but in, in, in the game of life, um, when you playing your hand, your card, that's dealt to you, play your whole fucking hand, okay? To um, so those of those who already put them spades down already, and now they ain't got nothing but hearts, clubs, and diamonds and shit. Can't renege. You didn't already play your hand. Continue to play your hand. But I'm sending something out. To those of y'all who've been watching, who've been listening, who've been dedicated, who've been hitting me in the DMs, who've been hitting me up on text messages and Instagram and shit like that, asking for a seat on the couch, man, do me a solid. Just send me about a 10, 15, if you want to go above and beyond, 30-minute video of you, you know what I'm saying, just, you know, podding, you know, and being the best you, you know what I'm saying, and what can you bring to clear the air? Um, you may be a guest co-host on the show, but it's, de- it's definitely a call to action to, to those of those who are out there watching, listening, and learning that's been also asking, um, show me what you got because everybody can talk a good game. And don't, and don't come on here having your heart on your sleeve. Yeah, don't, yeah, it, we, we, we don't want to put no people your out. Your feelings are going to fuck around and get hurt. Yeah, for sure. Um, Public service announcement. That's right. Because um, I don't sugarcoat nothing. Big facts. But but it, it yep. But with that being said, you know what I'm saying, the writing's on the wall. Um, not necessarily say that I necessarily need anybody here, but <laughs> in the same token, you know what I'm saying, like what like what can you bring to the table, and and what are you willing to learn? Um, with clear the air, and uh, just shoot me something in the DMs, man. And I, I'm not gonna put this on any other excerpts or nothing like that. You got to watch the whole fucking podcast to see this one. Um, and it's just like that, y'all. Um, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, clear the air. We out. Bernie Burns, bring us out, man. Journalism from a master site. Journalism from a master site. Journalism from a master site. Journalism from a map. 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 Map